Un unmute yourself. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Do you hear me? I don't hear you. Testing. Testing one, two. Okay. Testing one, two. Test, test. Okay, I see the green line.
Joyce? Yes, testing one, two. I hear you fine. Okay, thank you. Hey, Peter, this is Alex. Hello. I think he's muted. I hear you fine, Alex. Oh, can you uh, put me as a panelist? Uh, I didn't I, receive I, the link. I, I already did. Oh, great. Thank you.
Greetings. Uh, meeting doesn't start for another few minutes. Hello, Congressman Sherman. Hello, who am I speaking to? Oh, this is Peter Fletcher. Welcome to our meeting. Thank you for coming. Hi, Peter. I saw you on TV today. Oh, I was on, I think, KCAL and KCBS and uh, C-SPAN. Yeah, I saw you on CNN during the vote. Oh, well, and then you saw me only for 30 seconds. Actually, they gave me 36 seconds. Yes, I saw that. You were able to finish. <laughs> We're going to start at 6.30, and then we'll, we have to do a little housekeeping, and then we'll get right to you. Good. I don't think we have a quorum yet. We have nine. We need three more. We still have two minutes. Hi, this is Karen. I'm here. Hi, Peter. It's Shep. I see Gilbert in the um, attendee side. You may want to move him over. We have ten. Eleven. We probably have a quorum because the board is smaller this month. We need 12 for a quorum. We have 12. Well, I think we have 11. We have 11. Okay, we need 12 for a quorum for our bylaws. Oh, but the board is smaller now. We Doesn't still need 12. 12. Okay. Dina's here. I'm going to give everyone, you know, five more minutes. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi Dina. It looks like we have a quorum. Who just got here? I, I see Marty just signed on. Okay, then you have a quorum. I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm.
I see that Blake Clayton is on. And, and Jeremy is on too from 8045. Sean McCarthy is here. Hi, Sean. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, One too. One and all. Hi, Corinne. I see you're here tonight. Hello, this is Chris Rowe. Is, uh, have, are you waiting to start the meeting? Yes, I'm waiting just a couple more minutes. I'm going, I'm going to start at 6.45. I mean, 6.35. Okay, uh, is there a quorum? Yes. Yes, there's a quorum. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome everyone to the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council full board meeting. This will be a virtual meeting by teleconference um, in conformity with the governor's executive order in 2920. And due to concerns over COVID-19, the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council meetings will be conducted entirely telephonically for the next few months. Every person wishing to address the Neighborhood Council must either dial plus one six six nine nine hundred six eight three three or go online via Zoom and enter webinar ID number 9649371 and then press the pound sign to join the meeting. The public is requested to dial star nine when prompted by the presiding officer to address the board on any agenda item before the board takes action on that item. Zoom users should use the raise hand feature. And um, we will have our agenda on the screen or you can go to www.whcouncil.org and it's posted on the website on our calendar page on this date, January 13th. Thank you. The meeting is now called to order at 6 36 and we will now say the pledge of allegiance paul can you say the pledge well thank you for the honor joyce uh begin i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states, united states of, america of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation, nation under god, 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 god indivisible with liberty and justice, justice for all justice. Thank you very much, Paul. Karen, can you please now take the roll call vote? I can I mean, do the roll that. call. <laughs> uh, of course, of course. This is Karen TV as the Assistant Secretary. Um, Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant. I don't see him on the list. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase is here. Como Prefect. Como Prefect. I see here is absent. Brian Drapkin. 
Brian Trapkin. Brian can't be with us tonight. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler present. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy is present. Ray Cole. Ray Cole is absent. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean is here. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson is here. John Sandy Campbell. John Sandy Campbell. Absent. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati is here. Hey, Alex, as the alternate, you will be voting in your area as John Sandy is absent tonight. Uh, Don okay. Patterson. Don Patterson. Oh, Don can't be absent. with us tonight. He has a meeting. Hey, Bill Anderson. Bill Anderson can't be with us tonight. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin's here. Thank you. Gina White. Gina White. The Weiss is here. Thank you. Gina as alternate and John and Bill are not here today. You will be voting in their place. Fantastic. Uh, Austin, Austin Rocker. This is Austin Rocker present. And welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher is present. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman is present. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon is present. Keith Klein. Keith Klein. He can't be with us Absent. tonight. Okay. Uh, August Durr. August is with us. I saw him trying to raise his hand. Peter, can you see if he needs to be uh, elevated? Yeah, I just elevated him. Okay, August Stoyer. August Stoyer is present. Thank you. Uh, as the alternate and Heath is not here, you'll be voting in his place. <coughs> Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand is present. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, present. Bhutan Hermosian. Bhutan Hermosian present. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman present. Gina Thornburg. Gina Thornburg is not with us tonight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, 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 thir
uh, of particular importance is the PPP loan. This is a second loan and it's a forgivable loan. So it's, if it works out for your small business, it works out as a grant. You can uh, borrow and then hopefully have forgiven two and a half months payroll, unless you're a restaurant, uh, a restaurant or small hotel, in which case it could be three and a half uh, a months payroll. And then finally, uh, we have uh, extended the EDD benefit, the unemployment benefit, but it's regular plus 300. It's no longer regular plus 600. In any case, whether it's that issue or any other federal program, um, if occasionally, perhaps more than occasionally, the federal government makes a mistake. If that happens to you or someone else in the, in the community, uh, con you, here's how our constituent service program works. You contact uh, uh, Michael uh, Lowry. She works very hard. She solves your problem. And then I, Brad Sherman, take the credit. It's an outstanding system. For that, you need our phone number, 818-501-9200. Uh, and uh, if this was an in-person meeting, I, of course, would be handing you a, uh, a Brad Sherman comb with that phone number on it. Uh, as you know, I've given out a lot of combs uh, for obvious reasons. Um, I know that you would obviously like to spend an hour, hour and a half talking about what's going on in Washington and having me answer questions. And that is exactly what will happen January 21st on our telephone town hall. Uh, we've sent out uh, information as to how to log on at 7 p.m. That will be the first uh, full day of the Biden administration. And uh, if you need information about how to log on or if you want to send us uh, a, a question, uh, you go to bradsherman.house.gov. That's House for House of Representatives bradsherman.house.gov, click on the town hall, and uh, you can uh, both see how you can dial in or, uh, uh, or how you can ask a question. Um, yes, indeed, we've had an exciting uh, week here in Washington. And um, I, uh, I, I think that uh, it, the, the president seems to feel that he can overturn uh, the results of the election. Uh, he went to court. The courts are the ones that are supposed to determine these issues. They determined that uh, Biden had 306 electoral college votes and the rest of the process is pretty much ceremonial. Interrupting the ceremony isn't going to interrupt the outcome. What could have interrupted the outcome is if the US Supreme Court or the Pennsylvania Supreme Court had determined uh, that the vote count was somehow uh, not legal, but uh, it has to change that through the courts were unsuccessful. So just telling Vice President Pence, don't open the envelope uh, or to tell Congress or you know, invading the, the Capitol and preventing uh, the proceedings from going forward uh, never was uh, a, uh, a possible way of preventing the outcome mm -hmm. of the election. In any case, uh, I was on the floor um, until about 1.30, 1.40 p.m. Uh, a week ago uh, for what I thought would be the exciting part of the, of the day. And that is when Vice President Pence was presented the votes from, uh, 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 from Arizona and he played it straight. He didn't do anything political. He opened the envelope, he, he handled the meeting just the way he should. Uh, just the way Vice President Biden handled it four years ago. And, uh, and I thought, okay, then this, this goes on. They don't like us congregating on the floor, uh, COVID. So I went back to my office to watch the, uh, the speeches that, you know, frankly, I, I knew exactly what people would say on both sides, but to watch uh, the speeches arguing about Arizona. And then I found out that the Capitol had been breached. Um, this is the first time that's happened since the War of 1812. I've been here a long time. I've seen the, uh, I mean, sometimes these entryways are guarded by machine guns. They've been very serious since 9-11 about the security, but a decision was made not to use armed force. I'll never know whether that was the right decision or the wrong decision, but um, the number of casualties we had uh, would have been higher 
uh, perhaps if they had used armed force. Uh, but um, uh, the um, uh, the mob came in. Um, I was in the Rayburn building. The Rayburn building is my office building attached by a tunnel, all part of the security perimeter uh, attached by a, a tunnel to the Capitol. Uh, the, uh, the mob never came to the Rayburn building as far as I know. They certainly didn't come to my corridor. Uh, we were instructed to shelter in place and to be silent. We did that for five hours and then the building was clear. And uh, then we went uh, about the rest of the evening and we were done before 4 a.m. Um, today, we, we passed articles of impeachment uh, because Senator McConnell will not call the uh, Senate into session until the 19th. Uh, there's no way that uh, President Trump's uh, uh, presidency will be truncated or shortened by these articles. Uh, Vice President Pence says he will not use the 25th Amendment. And obviously, President uh, Trump is not the guy who's going to resign. So uh, the presidency uh, will continue right up until noon on January 20th when we'll see an inauguration. Um, we have, I think, three times as many troops here in Washington for this inauguration as we have in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. So uh, uh, this is, uh, and even with that, I have a few uh, security concerns that I shared with the, uh, the Sergeant of Arms, kind of the chief house a law enforcement official today. So um, I do think uh, this goes forward. The effect of impeachment, of an impeachment trial that is conducted after Trump leaves office would be that he could be disqualified from holding federal office again. And uh, I think that trial will go on perhaps two hours a day um, starting uh, in early February, maybe late January. And uh, finally, I wanna stress that while this matter about Trump does not prevent Congress from getting its other work done. What prevents Congress from getting its other work done are conflicts about what that other work should be. Uh, but uh, we were not scheduled to be in session today or yesterday. And uh, uh, we came into session just to deal with this. But the reason we don't have a better COVID relief bill is not because we're spending time on this. It's because we couldn't agree on a better COVID relief bill and we got what we could get. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, thank you for your time, and I want everybody to call in uh, with, with questions uh, January 21, 7 p.m., bradsherman.house.gov. That's uh, it. Co Congressman Sherman, can you have um, Ms. Lowry send me, email me the information, and I'll get it out to your constituents and to our board members? Good, we'll get you, I did a, uh, a, an email about today's events that includes the town hall, we'll get that to you. And uh, uh, Mikhail also, uh, Mikhail also uh, just sent her the town hall announcement uh, without the information about the impeachment, then you can send that out either way. Yes, we'll do, sir. Good, thanks a lot and uh, look forward to hearing from you uh, next Thursday. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Your service. Thanks. Bye. Uh, Peter, are there um, any other public officials who are attending the meeting? Yeah, uh, Veronica Voss is here. She has her hand raised. Jeremy Sarai is here. Blake Clayton is here. Uh, Tim Glick is here. So do you want to have Veronica go first? Um, mm -hmm. Whoever wants to go first is fine with me. Okay. Veronica, you go ahead. You need to unmute yourself. There you go. Hello, uh, Veronica here. I don't know if you want to let, I don't know if you can let both Tim and I speak at the same time because uh, we are here to announce a, a change in the, the staffing at the office. We're just kind of, you know, playing musical chairs a little bit. We're both staying with the office, but uh, myself, I will now be the field deputy for Woodland Hills. So I will be the main point of contact. I'll be meetings. I will be responding to all of your requests. Tim Glick is going to, and again, if you want to let him. He's unmuted. Let hey, us both go at the Tim same Glick time. But, um, Tim is going to stay on Warner Center. He's going to keep Warner Center as well as Canoga Park. 
and uh, we'll kind of jointly try and tackle Woodland Hills issues. Hey, Tim, sorry I did the, the Yeah, no, Veronica, um, I just wanted to make sure uh, everyone kind of um, knew some of your background. Veronica came on to our uh, staff about two years ago now, right? Uh, a little bit no, more? We're, we're we're at three and a half now. We're at three and a half? Oh my. Um, time, well, this year flew by. Anyway, um, the uh, Veronica helped me when uh, she was starting out at our office covering Woodland Hills. So she and I have actually driven the entire entirety of Woodland Hills. She's uh, driven it on her own multiple times as well. Um, and she's really familiar with a lot of the issues. She's sat across from me at the office uh, for, for years now. So uh, when she often knows what's going on in my phone calls and all that. So um, we're gonna continue to make sure that uh, we have a nice um, transition as we change uh, field deputies. Um, and the reason for the change is actually because uh, our supervisor, Jenny Portillo, uh, uh, switched from handling constituent services specifically for Canoga Park to being um, our district uh, deputy, de de uh, Deputy District Director, um, managing some of our uh, harder issues across our district. So um, we will, con she'll be continuing to cover Canoga Park as I transition and, and, and same thing with me and Veronica. So please let us know um, what your issues are and feel free to CC me on emails that I, I've been involved in um, so I can give her a nice update as to what's up. So that, that's our main announcement for today. Um, and uh, I, I know that a mailer also went around to a good number of people in the district regarding what we're doing in terms of the homeless and the some of the shelter beds that are opening over the next few months. I look forward to chatting with all of you about that in future. Happy to answer any questions now or that you have in future meetings. Again, I'm Veronica. I think I know many of you already. It's nice to be coming back to Woodland Hills, which is uh, just kind of my hometown. So thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. Uh, next, Jeremy Sarai from Jesse Gabriel's office. Go ahead, Jeremy. Uh, Peter? Can everyone hear me? Peter? Yes. Yeah. Cool. I'm sorry okay. to interrupt. Um, but it looked like that some participants may have their hands raised to perhaps yeah. ask uh, Veronica or Tim a question. Oh, okay. Well, hang on, Jeremy. Okay, yeah, I can no ask you to hold on. We're sorry phone. to interrupt you, Jeremy. Yeah, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, phone number ending in 070-805 area code if you have a question for the council office. You have to unmute. Please identify yourself. Hi, this is Lee Blumenfeld. I was just letting the board know I'm the budget advocate for region three and available for a report for you guys this evening. Thank you, Lee. Does anyone have a question or comment for Veronica or for Tim? One minute, please. I do. I do. Uh, I do. Okay, Jenny Sand. Um, I had my hand up as well. Okay, we'll go in order. So Jenny, you go first. Um, I just wanted to ask Veronica if there was, if she knew any, uh, if there was any update on Bob, was it Bob Blumenfeld's um, program on the homeless, if that, if there, if there has been any progress on that, uh, on that program with the council, you know? There's been a lot of progress. Am I, am I unmuted still? Yes. Okay. We, we've had a lot of progress and just kind of the, the summary version of it is, we are moving forward with eight projects to shelter homeless individuals. Um, one, we, we've added a building to our local domestic violence shelter. We've added a building to our local substance abuse treatment center, Tarzana Treatment Center. We are putting in a safe parking lot in Canoga Park, similar to the one op already operating behind the council member's office. We're opening up a bridge home at the end of this month. The city has purchased two Project Room Key hotels that will now become Project Home Key hotels. And we're opening up two cabin communities, one in Reseda and one in Tarzana. So in total, there will be about 450 new beds in our district 
excuse me, by the end of April, which is pretty astonishing because up until last year, in the entire West Valley, there were approximately 40 shelter beds available for about 4,000 homeless people. So we are, <laughs> we're increasing the number of beds west of the 405 by a factor of 10. And we're really, really proud of that. It's still in process. Like I said, we're opening one, we're opening up one of them at the end of this month, two more by the end of April. Some are already open. I think you guys have already seen the results. We have some clear underpasses, not all of them. Corbin, we know they're there, uh, but the rest of our underpasses have remained clear after we offered shelter to everyone living in our underpasses. And that was successful in part, we think, because the shelter that was offered was within the West Valley. And so people were more willing to accept shelter beds in areas they were familiar with. So we saw a much higher acceptance rate in terms of uh, when services were offered, people actually choosing to accept it. So we're very hopeful. We're gonna continue to plow forward with this plan. And uh, I'm not sure if that entirely answers your question, but I hope so. Uh, Angela Dawson, you're next. Hi, this is Angela Dawson. Um, yeah, thank you for bringing up Corbin because that continues to be a problem in terms of encampments. Uh, regardless of how many tiny cabins or whatever you're building, um, it just seems to be a continuing problem. There's also uh, encampments uh, near just off on the DeSoto off ramp, and um, uh, there's a growing number of broken down RVs along Ventura Boulevard in front of the bowling alley. Um, as well as a number of RVs um, that just have taken an encampment on Del Val. So I would hope that the, con uh, um, the councilman will take a look at that. And also, I, can, you know, I know the uh, councilman also posted uh, something today about the police stations. There's been a lot of concern in the community about closure of the Topanga station and possibly cutting back some of the other stations in the councilman's district. Can you address what's going on with that? Because I mean, there's a reason why some of these rumors get started. What's happening with the uh, police stations and possible plans to shutter the Topanga station? Sure, I, I wanna let you know that of course we know about the RVs by the Bolero and on Del Valle. We're very much aware RVs seem to be the most intractable problem we have at the moment. Um, some of those living on Del Valle appear to be living in vans, which would qualify for safe parking. So um, there, that we're, we're hoping that that will, will be able to connect those people to the appropriate services. But I'm going to have to admit, we've, we've, got a, we've got a gap in what services are available, and that gap is RVs. Doesn't mean we're giving up. We're, we're, this is just the beginning. We all know that there's a long, long way to go, but we're hoping to make to, to continue to make progress. In terms of public safety, and Tim, if you know any more about this than I do, what I can tell you for sure is that the council member does not want that station to close. That is not something he wants to see happen. If it were to happen, we, we, which we hope to God it would not, it would, it would be the decision of the police chief and it would not be something in which we would actually be involved. The police chief is, is making decisions about about what to prioritize um, in, a, in, a, in a really tight budget year. And we hope that they don't make that decision. And, uh, but it, it's, it's ultimately outside of our hands. We don't tell them nitpicky how to spend what where. So um, the council member would like to keep it open. It, it services the West Valley. It's a really important resource for all of us. You know it, we know it. Uh, like I said, it's out of our hands, but we really hope it doesn't happen. Okay, uh, Sean McCarthy, I believe you had your hand up. I did, and I took my hand down. Okay, so that's it for board members. Um, Christine Rowe has her hand up. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I mm -hmm. would just like to point out, thank you. Uh, it's nice to know Veronica has taken this over. I'm glad to know Tim will still be involved. Uh, I have two questions related to this. So uh, I hope that you guys monitor next door because the exact issues that Angela Dawson just brought up, brought up the Corbin 
and the bowling alley in Del Valle were just being posted in the past day uh, on an issue because Woodland Hill, I mean, I'm sorry, West Hills Neighborhood Council Homeless Committee met this week. And so there were a lot of posts coming from that and they were going into the Woodland Hills related homeless issues. So my question is this, I know some people won't like what I'm gonna say, but last year you used the community center on shoot for the homeless. And I feel at this time of year when it's so cold, plus we're dealing with COVID, that we should be using it for the homeless again, uh, especially when we're all on lockdown, so we shouldn't be going there. Why are we not using the community centers for the homeless right now? Thank you. It's a really good question. And I think honestly, it's a matter of the source of funding. The source of funding, I believe, was emergency funds that was operating that as a shelter for the six months when it was a shelter. And uh, it was, it was, my understanding, it was cost prohibitive. And that's why they have wound those those programs down. That's not to say we're not receiving criticism for the amount of money that's being spent on these other homeless interventions. We are, we're aware of it. We still think that they are <laughs> 10 times cheaper than the alternative, which is permanent supportive housing. And, and we're still determined to move forward. But good news is, I know, I know nothing is, is, is as fast as we need. And that's just the honest truth. But the city, nonetheless, is moving quite quickly, considering the speed at which it usually moves. So we do have a, the bridge home in Canoga Park is opening end of this month. And we will have two cabin communities open by the end of April. So that's, that's, a, that's a few hundred beds coming online in the, in the quite near future. So we're, we're keeping our mind on that. I hear you. I, I know I know there's a need now. <laughs> there's a huge need now that even these beds um, aren't going to make a dent in when you look at it citywide. But when you look at it locally, 700 homeless people, which is what it was by the last homeless count, putting in 450 beds where we're going to shelter more than 60% of the homeless in our district. So we're proud of it. We're, we're moving quickly and thank you for the suggestion, but that's my understanding of the situation. Okay, that looks like all the questions. I, I did raise my hand again. I, I did wanna ask Veronica one question. The hotels that have been put aside, which hotels are they? Where are they located? Absolutely. So one is the Super 8 in Canoga Park it's on Topanga Canyon. The other one is the Howard Johnson in Reseda, which is on Reseda Boulevard. So none of these are in Woodland Hills? They are not. Uh, that doesn't mean that there, there wouldn't be one in future. Um, we're anticipating potentially, a, we're hoping for another round of Project Room Key funding uh, this year over the course of this next year. So, so any hotel that is willing is, we're willing to entertain a, a purchase. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to go on to Jeremy Sarai. Jeremy, go ahead. Thanks, Peter. Um, hi, everyone. Hoping everyone's well. Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple updates from the state, from Assemblymember Jesse Gabriel. On um, this Monday, our 2021 legislative session began. Um, you know, we're excited to be working on policy again and pushing through important issues in the state capitol. Um, this year, the assembly member will be working around his priorities on, you know, addressing homelessness, um, especially when it comes to providing accountability and resources, responding to the impacts of COVID-19, um, economic and health, um, hate crimes, and a number of other issues. And so we're looking forward to working on that. Um, I wanted to let you guys know, um, this Friday, our office will be airing a conversation kind of like a recorded conversation between um, Los Angeles Family Housing President, Stephanie Klosky Gamer, and with the assembly member, um, you'll, you'll be able to tune in on the assembly member's Facebook page. It's gonna be 1 p.m. on Friday. Um, the conversation is gonna be about like 45 minutes long. 
Um, yeah, the two of them, you know, talking about addressing homelessness in Los Angeles, um, you know, something we're all passionate about. And so I highly recommend folks tune in. Again, Assembly Members Facebook page, Friday, 1 p.m. Um, yeah, it should be like super relevant. Um, as far as, you know, other social media goes, you know, <laughs> as far as updates for new policy, upcoming events, other ongoings, please continue to, you know, watch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, you know, you know how to reach me um, if you have any other, you know, follow-up questions in the future. Yeah, that's all for me. Okay. Any questions for uh, Jesse? Let's see. Sean, do you have a question or you didn't lower your hand before? Uh, yes, J uh, Jeremy, yeah. I, my name is Sean McCarthy. Uh, you mentioned hate crimes. Do attacks on churches still qualify as a hate crime? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, these are, yeah, you know, I think we're focused on, you know, a rise in hate crimes um, for, you know, people in all sorts of religious groups that are, you know, currently taking place right now. And so, yeah, um, you know, we'll be looking into that sort of policy. Okay. I just want to make sure because we still don't know what happened. And I know nobody wants to hear this. The San Gabriel Mission, a state historical monument in the city of San Gabriel, still will not tell us what happened out there. Now, either their police department is absolutely inept or they're not telling us what's going on. So, and, and I'm a Roman Catholic, so I have a real interest in this. This is part of my faith. And there have been churches around the valley that have been attacked, other Catholic churches. And I wanna know that these, are, that these churches will be protected. It's important to me. It's important to a lot of your constituents. So I really wanna encourage you to make sure that you include Catholic churches in the churches that are, that are, uh, that are subject or could be subject to a hate crime, uh, a hate crime charge. So I, I thank you very much for that, and I'll be watching that. Thank you. Understood. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. That's it for the board. I think next up is Blake Clayton. Blake, go ahead. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Blake Clayton. I'm with Supervisor Sheila Kuehl's office. Um, I have, well, I had some updates to give. Um, these are subject to change. I believe they're going to change fairly soon, but I at least want to share with you what I have. And I will also um, give this information out so that you all will have, um, have it and you can pass it out to the community. Um, but to start, of course, as you know, it's in regard to the um, COVID-19 vaccine. I just have a big list of, of different topics. There's, um, there's Q&A on here. There's some res responses to myths and misinformations. Um, there's information about vaccine distribution in terms of you know the different phases and different tiers that are taking place and how the vaccine will be, um, how the vaccine will be um, distributed. And then also, um, it goes into detail for the for the providers. There have been um, healthcare workers that haven't been able to get access to the vaccine. And um, on here, we have a way for individuals to provide their ID and um, reach out, and they will um, be supplied with the vaccine. Um, don't want to go too much into that. Um, it's a lot to read. Um, I definitely encourage everybody to to read through it. Um, very helpful for not only you, but for family members as well. Um, but as I was saying earlier, um, this may be, this is subject to change. Um, there has been changes in the counties around us, such as um, Ventura and Orange County, in terms of how they're um, using the vaccine. And I'm sure it's going to change for LA County. Yeah. We just haven't had word yet, but um, I'm sure we'll hear something soon. And once I have that information, I will, I will pass that out. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. I don't see any hands from board members. I see a Kathleen Barth. Do you have a question for Blake? Go ahead. Um, Blake, how can we find this document? Uh, so I'm going to email it to the board um, okay. and they will 
they'll be able to get it out to everybody. Christine Rowe has her hand raised. Go ahead, Christine. Hi. Um, for you. So, um, Blake, um, again, my name is Chris Rowe. I write for City Watch once in a while, and I don't know if you saw the article I sent to all the supervisors. Um, we are, you, the uh, Board of Supervisors has selected or the process has gone into place to start redistricting for the Board of Supervisors. And uh, as most of your board members of the neighborhood council probably are aware, each supervisor right now has over 2 million population in their district roughly. And mm -hmm. with the new census, we're probably gonna go up to maybe 11 million in the county. So I wrote an article in City Watch that uh, asked how we could go to 11 supervisors. And after I wrote that, someone contacted me and explained to me that it would take a ballot initiative and stuff. But I feel like, just like we have the neighborhood council system, which you know is there to represent the community, it, it seems impossible for someone that represents 2 million people to represent every constituent need. And so I felt like having the lower 1 million per supervisor rather than 2 million. So A, did you read the article? And B, is there any way at this time to um, make a motion uh, to the state? The state would have to actually put it on the ballot and get it voted on, I believe. And apparently only San Francisco has 11 supervisors because they combine the city with the state and have a mayor. Uh, but we have the greatest population and so anyway, if you could respond, I would appreciate it. Okay, um, first things first, Chris, I think the last email, I'm looking at my emails now, the last email I have from you is unfortunately back in um, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm guessing you emailed the, um, the general email address, which is what the, um, the supervisor and her assistant checked. Um, with that being said, if it's a if it was speaking about redistricting and things along those lines, um, it probably went over to our regional planning deputy, which is Timothy Lipman, mm -hmm. um, who would probably have more answers uh, for you. But if you would like to um, connect with me, I can um, reach out to downtown, um, see what the process is mm -hmm. in regard to uh, the supervisors and. Um, get back to you with more information. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll email you and we'll, we'll connect. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any more hands raised. So Jeremy. Oh, so Blake, thank you very much. No problem. Um, Lee, the budget advocate has his hand up. And go ahead and unmute. Hello, board members and fellow stakeholders. Uh, I am uh, the Region 3 Budget Advocate, um, bringing you not so good news from the city's budget. Uh, currently, what we're looking at is a projected $700 million uh, hole that uh, the city has deemed to call the budget gap. Um, part of that includes a $75 million that was borrowed from the Public Works Trust Fund. Uh, issues that we are currently seeing is, is that the separation incentive program, which was allegedly to save $140 million, was not rolled out uh, entirely too properly. And uh, some of the offset funds that we we're expecting to get from it wasn't as successful um, and it looks like 70 million of it is going to be uh, out of the potential cuts which was the design for it um, <clears throat> what we are looking for and what I've been telling the other neighborhood councils is you know this isn't the time to say I want X program 
I want Y program. We need to start looking at which programs do you want to save and prevent any cuts in general, and which ones are you willing to go ahead and cut. Um, there was an announcement today that the mayor's office did come to uh, some sort of tentative understanding with the unions, the city unions, um, for deferment of pay raises for the different departments, um, which looks like it will save the positions that were on the CAO's hit list, which was 143 positions in the city attorney's office, 27 positions in the Bureau of Engineering's office, 45 positions in the Animal Services Department, and uh, 350 or so uh, officers uh, to be uh, laid off. Uh, if the unions approve it, there, there's not going to be furloughs and there's not going to be pay raises for them. Uh, LAPD is still saying that there's a targeted uh, reduction in services, specifically in uh, specialized units. Um, and the council file for this, uh, located where the CAO file is 0590-000. 98-5190 and of particular concern is on page 16 in the summary. Uh, one of the methods for cost cutting is insourcing DWP's work. So when DWP goes out and does repairs on their uh, infrastructure, they go ahead and have contractors restore their sidewalks or the streets or what have you. The city's looking to push that over to the Bureau of Street Services to go ahead and do. Uh, the problem is, is that the people that would be able to run such a program are few and far between due to the non-staffing levels that we were supposed to get back to from the previous recession, as well as the separation incentive program where we basically gave folks uh, money for the senior, senior folks uh, in the departments to go ahead and leave. Uh, so that's an area of particular concern. Uh, I am open to questions from the board, uh, Madam Chair. John McCarthy. Uh, yes, and, and thank you for being here. Is it Blake? Yes. Uh, Blake, the, uh, recently I read that the state of California apparently has some sort of a, a uh, they're flush with cash. They've got more money than they thought they'd have by by a matter of billions of dollars. Is there any chance you're gonna get anything from the state or is that, all, is that all for state workers? Is none of it going to come to the local level? Because they're, apparently they're, not only are they able to meet all their obligations, they have a huge, a huge surplus in the, in the tens of billions of dollars. Is, can, you, can you comment on that? So um, I, I did see the report on that, and I'm going to preface this with I'm a budget advocate reviewing the city of Los Angeles's budget. Um, but as of concern and what seemed to have been the approach by the city of Los Angeles was a gamble that the state and the federal government were basically going to bail us out of our budget hole. Um, we were actually anticipating before COVID to be in a budget hole due to uh, salaries and, and over expenditures and programs. How the state money is going to be sent out, um, I have no idea. Uh, I'm sure LA is gonna get some of it, is, would my, be my guess, so call your constituents uh, or, and representatives in the state saying, hey, we need money. Um, but there's also going to be theoretically a refund from what I heard once there's a certain uh, threshold limit, um, you, the state is actually supposed to send all the taxpayers money back. So you should be looking for about a dollar. <laughs> um, but that's, that's where I currently see, see this situation. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Has the board uh, exercised any uh, direction that they wish for me to advocate on or cuts you wish me to avoid in areas? Uh, 
and you, Joyce. Don't, I don't see any hands. Joyce is speaking. Joyce, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, unmute yourself. Um, Lee, can you email me that information and I'll get it out to the board and they can email you. Sure. Uh, I believe you already have it. It was sent in on the uh, December uh, update, but I can go ahead and send it to you again. Okay, thank you. And can you tag it as a board request? Board request. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank everyone for um, attending tonight. We look forward to seeing you and we'll see you next week. Uh, next, we will have public comment by the public on agenda items, on non-agenda items. Uh, two minutes each, please. Zach Violet, you have two minutes. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, my name is uh, Zach. I'm a uh, stakeholder in Woodland Hills. Uh, I work in the area um, and I'm calling in tonight because I'd like to request um, from your council um, that you make a standing rule that will uh, disclose that if any CIS is written by Bob Blumenfeld's office or any other councilman's office, that that will be disclosed on the agenda. Uh, the November meeting, um, it sort of was leaked out and it didn't seem like anyone really on the board knew that Bob's office and Tim Glick had supplied the language for this. Um, it was really perverse uh, use of the NC system. The NCs are supposed to advise the city council, not take orders from them. And, you know, we, obviously found out about this through a public records act request um and it was just very 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 shady and um kind of a disgraceful um so i would really hope that moving forward you guys place a standing rule um for your board that says um you know if, if to, to notify the public and it seems the other members of the board when city councilmen are writing your community impact statements for you. Um, I think more transparency is always good. And at that November meeting, there was a very obvious lack of transparency, uh, both from the board, especially Joyce, and uh, from the CD3 office. So um, please consider that. Thank you, I yield my time. Chris Rowe. You'd unmute Chris. Hi. Hi, this is Chris Rowe. I was on that meeting. I personally feel like there should be someone on uh, when you have a large neighborhood council. Actually, be, I, I wish the council's office actually would send out when they send out their newsletter, a, uh, a list of all CISs that 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 they are putting out there. And, and yes, I do believe it is the obligation of the neighborhood council to take a position on it. So I support that, that it went on the agenda. Uh, Bob Blumenfield was very transparent, you know, parent about why he, he brought this issue and Judge Carter and the homeless issue has been discussed at length tonight. And I just would like to say that, um, I'm very disappointed that a former member of the West Hills Neighborhood Council who just spoke um, is being critical of your board. Um, and I, 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 I just have tremendous respect for your board members, the, the ones that I've known for a long time. And so I have to disagree with the, the former speaker and that's why I chose to speak because I feel like, yes, something as important as that CIS, yes, you should have weighed in on. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Annie D. Hello, hi, can you hear me? Yes, you're very faint. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna to try to talk louder. Is this any better? 
Sure. Um, okay, thank you. I just wanted to, um, my name is Annie, I'm in Woodland Hills. And I just wanted to speak on this, um, also this, uh, this CIS, the CIS that was, was put in. And um, just overall, um, I think that the former caller is not fully understanding that um, it's totally fine for a council. It's, it's actually the council members responsibility. The city council members are responsible for, for um, communicating with neighborhood councils and with all of their constituents using these, these things. But water doesn't flow upstream, rivers run downstream. And so really, you know, it goes, the neighborhood council needs to be speak, be representing the people in the area and their thoughts. So Bob Blumenfield's office could come send a representative and communicate about concerns, but offering language is a tricky wicket. And it's not something that you want to get into. So I, 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 I agree that these things should be before everyone, but no, language should not be given to a neighborhood council by a city council um, member's office under any circumstances. So I do support the, I support the idea that should that happen, that this body will be and everyone involved would be informed. And I also support item six to create standing rules that prohibits people who abstain from a vote from then moving. That's on the agenda. The to, That's okay. on the agenda. That's oh, not. so this is non-agenda. Oh, thank you so much. So non-agendized points. Um, absolutely. This is, you need to create a rule. This, this is not transparency and governance if we start, allow, if we start accepting pre-written um, language from council members' offices. That's not the way it works. Okay, it's two minutes. Thank you. Caleb? You have to unmute. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I would actually like to echo pretty much the exact sentiment of the previous caller. Uh, I think in an instance like we observed, um, <clears throat> as has now been uncovered thanks to a public records request, we know, we know that information and language was given to you directly from a council member's office. If that happens, yes, I, of course, I think that you should have some sort of rule in place that mandates that you should have to disclose that that language did not originate from your board. However, oh, we're in, sorry, one second. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think that goes against exactly what a community impact statement is. It's a statement of your body of how you feel about a particular issue. So to take language from some outside party literally pretty much nullifies what a community impact statement is. So I agree with the previous caller. You probably shouldn't be doing that at all. I think that's actually quite unethical and goes against what you need to be doing as a body. But anyway, that's it. Yield my time. Nigel. Uh, hi. Yeah, I just wanted to um, echo some of the previous callers. Uh, yeah, I also was pretty upset to learn uh, that this language didn't originate um, in this in this body, and that it actually came from your your council member. I think that's you know it brings up a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of problems with ethics, and also again it, it it hurts it hurts you as a neighborhood council because you you lose some of your autonomy. I mean, if you're just a, a voice, if you're just you know another amplifying voice of your council members whim then what's the point of having a neighborhood council um so yeah i would urge that you know that you cease that and um also you know to to implement some of these some of these items that we see items six seven eight okay, that will are, you know those are general us. items thank you okay. for your comment okay no more hands Okay, thank you very much. Um, we will now move on to um, organization, operation, policies and procedures, approval of the minutes of special board meeting, December 9th, 2020. Jeffrey Kavanaugh, second. Any discussion?
Everyone was provided the minutes um, on Sunday. I hope that everyone has had a chance to uh, look at the minutes. August, um, August has his hand up. Okay, and so um, August, do you have a uh, comment or correction on the minutes? I believe item three, my name is misspelled. Other than that, no comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Karen, can you make that correction, please? Are there any this is, this other? Is Karen. Thank you, Karen. Um, are there any more um, comments or corrections on the uh, December 9th min minutes? I don't see any hands. Okay, uh, there being no, no further comment or questions, uh, we will now take a roll call vote to approve the minutes. Karen. Okay, this is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. Uh, per, my, per my notes, I have Aaron, Aaron Kwan's. I've noticed he arrived at 719. So Aaron, you are voting. Uh, how do you vote on the minutes? Excuse me? Aaron, Aaron Kwan? No, in the negative. Okay, Karen DiBiase, I vote yes. Uh, Paul Lawler. Uh, Paul Lawler votes yes. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole, I noticed that you arrived at 648. You are now voting. Ray Thank Cole. You. Ray Cole votes yes. Uh, Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Uh, Alex Farasetti. Alex Farasetti votes yes. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin. Yeah, hold on. I can had muted myself. Marty Lipkin votes yes. Okay. Thank you. Gina Weiss. Gina Weiss votes yes. Uh, Austin Rocker. This is Austin Rocker. I vote yes. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon votes yes. August Durr. August Steuer votes yes. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, yes. And Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes yes. All right, so this is Karen DiBiase, the Assistant Secretary. The vote is 18 yes, one no for a total of 19. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. now, now we will move on to officer reports. Um, President Joyce Fletcher. Um, we do have some uh, resignations from the board. Uh, youth member Andrew McNeil. Area 7 alternate Tim Root, Area 1 alternate Tamara Johnson, at large alternate Gina Thornburg, and also um, Bill Anderson um, has resigned also. And Bill Anderson is our business uh, area 4 board member. And also uh, a comment on PRA requests. Uh, private email addresses will not be redacted at this time. It's very consuming. Um, 
as board members are requested to use their whcouncil.org email address. So if you're still using your private email address, uh, be aware that uh, they won't be redacted. And if you would, uh, all of your uh, WH Council email has been set up. Uh, you just need to set up, uh, you know, a way of using it and either Peter or Shep will be happy to help you with that if you uh, would like to do that. Uh, thank you very much. Shepard. Okay, and thank you. Uh, if Joyce will indulge me, I actually also uh, can come add to this a uh, report from our senior lead officers. Uh, I'm sure people might be interested. So let me do that uh, briefly first. Um, they are not obviously available. They probably will not be available for this board meeting or any upcoming, maybe uh, any other upcoming meetings for the next couple of weeks because they're uh, deployed uh, for related to the inauguration. That said, there are no specific areas of concern in the Woodland Hills, the West Valley area. Um, they are working on a task force to address the street racing issue, which has uh, been brought up by this board previously. Uh, and they're going after those people who are organizing the events. Um, you've heard a little bit about the station closure possibilities or reassignments. Um, the other area that was mentioned as an area of concern lately uh, is actually the Pacific Youth Lodge. There apparently have been a number of issues there and there's some conversation about referring that to the city attorney's office as a nuisance. Uh, so anyway, that is the SLO speedy report. Uh, as for uh, neighborhood council. So uh, with Bill Anderson's re resignation, um, the education committee chair position is open to uh, a board member. Uh, if you're interested, please send that, send your interest to Joyce, uh, and then that will go, Joyce will make her decision, will go to the officers uh, to review. Um, and again, this could all be reassessed once a new board is seated anyway, as all committees could get shifted around. Um, a reminder, your committee members who are stakeholders can have NC email to do NC business. We do have a couple of people who have requested that and it's been set up for them. Um, but a reminder to everybody that NC neighborhood council email is only used for neighborhood council business. And especially with the elections coming up cannot be used to advocate for your reelection or election or for other non NC business. That also goes for the mailing lists that we have. Our email lists are for NC business and that's not used for their private uh, uh, goals. <laughs> um, da, da, da. There, there, as this question has come up from some uh, stakeholders who've joined committees, we have standing rule 24, which uh, requires uh, certain trainings with regard to budget and code of conduct, et cetera. But that is now behind the LA city cornerstone uh, portal and currently stakeholders don't have access to that. Um, I'm still waiting, the, the done Empower LA is looking into this and what, what our options would be. So for now, obviously we're not going to enforce that with stakeholder or new stakeholder committee members. Um, and then we can look at, see what, what the city comes back with or look at just revising our standing rules. Um, uh, Joyce uh, has mentioned the uh, election is coming up on May 4th. Registration is open and is open until February 16th. We sent that out in the email blast that went out yesterday. It's been sent out before. There's information and links on the whcouncil.org uh, webpage, and that can, gives you links, both tells you what's available and open, what will be open, which of course are the uh, even numbered areas plus the at large. Um, and there are train, I think the next uh, Empower LA city clerk hosted training, I believe is January 30th, but there's also a bunch of stuff online that's available. Um, that is that. And just a reminder on the COVID front, you know, be safe out there. There's 14,000 plus cases that were reported today. Woodland Hills is at 3,547, which is lower per capita than other parts of the city. But I remember when we were only at 400. Uh, 10 to 12% of positive tests, people now wind up in the hospital. It's not a place anybody wants to be. So it's really important that people uh, wear their face coverings, wash their hands and just be safe and stay in when you can or stay away from others. 
All right, that's it for me. Thanks. Shepherd. Paul Lawler. Hi, Paul Lawler here. Nothing except we have the two MERS to vote on. Thank you. Um, the secretary and the parliamentarian are not available, so we will move on to item two, uh, discussion and possible actions. Uh, the governance committee, Don Patterson, uh, appointment of open seat alternate um, area one. Uh, Shep, will you go on ahead and take uh, this uh, item? Whoa, oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> Was not prepared for that request. Surprise. Uh, all right, uh, <clears throat> discussion and possible action. Pursuant to Article 5, Section 6 of the Woodland Hills Winter Center Neighborhood Council bylaws, the motion for the board by majority vote to confirm one of the following applicants to serve as the alternate Area 1 representative for the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council. And we have Rena McCaughey and Mark Schwartz. And Joyce, I guess uh, you'd like to have each person have an opportunity to speak. So I hand it back. We need a, we need a second. Uh, Paul Lawler here, I'll second. Good. OK, so uh, first we will have uh, Rena uh, speak. Um, is Rena available? Yes, I, Rena McCaughey is here, yes. Hi, Rena. Uh, please uh, go on ahead. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, board members uh, and members of the public. Um, I have, um, I would like to join the uh, Area 1 Neighborhood Council rep uh, because I have lived here for a very long time, over 20 years. I'm a local um, business owner and resident. Um, I have volunteered in the area for, in my local area uh, for years. Um, in addition to that, um, I just recently joined the Woodland Hills uh, Council uh, Education Committee. So I am very much dedicated to uh, joining the committees and joining the council uh, and, and see if I can be of some, of some help. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Rena? Thank you, Council. Um, do you have any idea what 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 drives you? What what do you expect? Uh, which committee do you think you would uh, do best on? Uh, Aaron, uh, is Aaron. Uh, hi, uh, thank you, thank you for the question, Erin. Um, so I have uh, I, I am in the education committee, and I would like to stay in the education committee because uh, the reason I was driven to uh, join the council is because I have a, a minor child in public school and I wanna advocate for public education. Angela Dawson has her hand up. Go ahead, Angela. Wait a minute. Hi, this is Angela Dawson. Hi, um, I just had a quick question. Um, number one, um, what are your thoughts on um, our uh, defunding the police and secondly on our new district attorney uh mr gascon um if specifically uh my thoughts in what regard can, can you be um well um, as, as as we were just uh, told there's a huge budget gap coming up and obviously the lapd is uh eyeing certain um cutbacks and uh reshuffling and so forth uh, earlier i brought up the matter of closing uh, the possibility of closing the Topanga station. Meanwhile, crime, uh, particularly in certain areas like Grand Theft Auto and, and, and theft are up in the area. So how do you feel about uh, policing in the area and also about uh, Gascon's plans to um, lessen some of the uh, number of people who are in jail right now and uh, curtailing some of the uh, you know, uh, uh, special circumstances and so forth on on uh, defendants. I understand. Um, so my, I haven't given much consideration to the my Mr. Gascon's um, policies. I've been more involved with uh, the stay at home um, uh, rule for, uh, you know, how that impacts our children during this pandemic. Um, so Mr. Gascon, I don't know much about him. I definitely do not support uh, shuttling down the Topanga station. I think that it is necessary and I think that it, it is essential. It, it's an essential service to the community and that we should definitely mm -hmm. uh, keep it open. 
Marty Lipkin. Yes, uh, Rena, exactly. Uh, what are your views on the use of the uh, the now vacant school properties that uh, are are in the, uh, the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council area? There are um, four of them. One of them in particular is in area number one on Oso Street. So what do you think should be used? That should thank be you. used. Yes, thank you um, um, for the question. I, I have actually been attending the, um, the hearings that we're having locally. And I'm also uh, very involved in LAUSD. I attend all the Board of Education meetings. I was uh, in the board meeting yesterday. Uh, usually it's a whole day event. Um, and so I believe that the school, those stones should remain for public education. And I definitely um, advocate for that, that they should be used for um, rebuilding, uh, modernizing our schools. They should not be sold or repurposed uh, in any way. I definitely don't agree with that. As a matter of fact, um, I was on a call yesterday with, I believe it was Mr. Kwon, and we were talking about the fact that there's going to be 800 units uh, going to be built over where the Fry's, uh, the former Fry store is, 800 housing units. And I wonder how we're going to be able to uh, provide uh, uh, educational space for those children. Since, since most of our schools are already impacted. Thank you. Are there any further questions for Raina? Sure. I don't, I, I don't see my hand doesn't seem to be thing doesn't seem to be working. Can can, can, can everyone wait to be called on, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, Jenny, uh, we see that you would like to speak, but I believe Shepard is next. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I just uh, hold on. Um, I just want to say a uh, reminder one that we may have another slot open as well as the uh, at large. Um, but uh, Rena has really been, uh, has put a lot of time into the board recently, and I think she deserves consideration for that. Uh, I came to meet her when her community had asked for the slow streets uh, support, and uh, she was very helpful and attentive and, uh, you know, took our suggestions to heart and worked with us really well as a community member, and I think that that deserves a lot of consideration. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You and Jenny, uh, Peter, can you? Uh... Jenny's unmuted, so go ahead, Jenny. Thank you. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, Rena, I'm thrilled that you're on the education board. I am too. Um, I was curious how you felt about the, um, the continuing closure and how you felt about opening up our schools, which statistically um, the chances of our children either getting or passing on COVID are statistically almost zero. And I just wondered how you felt about that since you have a child in public school. And of course, also what, what you felt about the lawsuit against LAUSD to keep them from opening up. Thank you very much for the question. Um, I, unfortunately, I am not familiar with the lawsuit to keep them from opening up. I'm familiar mostly with uh, the movement to reopen our schools. Um, that is what uh, I, I agree with that. If it's safe to do so, uh, I definitely, believe that our, our kids need to return to the classroom. Um, I can tell you that I'm a stay-at-home parent, and for that reason, um, I'm able to help, but not everyone uh, is able to do that, and we have, we definitely have a, um, I, I think, a shortfall, and um, the district has a responsibility to ensure that our children return to school, and if they have to go the extra mile or do anything additional to ensure that that teachers are safe, that the staff is safe, that the kids are safe. Um, I, you know, I believe that the children should return to school as safe as, as soon as possible, as soon as it's safe to do so. That is my opinion. Thank, Thank you for the question. August Stoyer. This is August Stoyer and I wanna caution the board members from asking specific questions regarding issues that may come before the board because you're if you're asking the applicants to prejudge the issue then they can be asked to recuse themselves in the future 
because they prejudge the issue. So just be careful on how you word your questions. Thank you. Thank you, August. I would also like to say that uh, we also have to um, be considerate about asking um, anyone questions that are politically oriented. So uh, please keep that in mind. Thank you, Raina. You want to go on to Mark? Thank you. I believe Sean McCarthy has raised his hand. Yeah, go ahead, Sean. This is Sean McCarthy. Uh, Raina, I've never seen you at any of our meetings. I've never heard you comment at any of our meetings. Now, you may have been at the Education Committee, but um, she's been at our meeting. I, 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 I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't recall. I don't recall her being there. I just. I just don't. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of work involved here. You're going to. I, I would encourage you, whether you whether you are are selected this evening or not, to hang around until I don't know 10:30 when we get done tonight with the very last issues, especially the plum issues. These are important issues. You mentioned that that uh, the the apartment house being built where the the current fries is. These are the sorts of things that we get involved with. This, this involves you reading those, those reports and commenting on them. Uh, it means being involved with more than just the education committee. And I wanna make sure that you understand that, that this is not just one meeting, but it's probably two to three meetings, three meetings a month at a minimum. Uh, so you need to be ready to do that because we've had a lot of people. We've had a lot of people who've been elected. We've had a lot of people who've been selected that have been here and gone. You've heard about four people tonight. I think uh, maybe one out of the four people who have resigned tonight, uh, as of tonight, were selected to be on this board. And it's, it's tiresome to go through this process and have people selected and they quit and selected and they quit. Um, so, you know, I wanna make sure that you understand that there is a, that there is a time commitment uh, and that uh, and that we take this job very seriously. We're not paid to do this. We're not paid. We get no glory. We just, excuse my French, but take an ass kick in every once in a while. You've heard the comments that were made this evening. So I want to make sure that you know that and that you're going to show up because if you're not, uh, then 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 you're not. Uh, I recognize you live over in Area One. That's great. Uh, you know and and. Uh, uh, so, so that's fine, but I want to make sure that you're ready to put in the commitment that it takes to do this, and more than just the minimum. There are a lot of people on this committee, and I'm not going to say anything about anybody. There are a lot of people who just show up to this meeting and don't do anything else. You need to be committed to this, and I, I want to encourage you that if you're if you're going to do this, that you make a commitment, a serious commitment, to be part of this organization and not just show up to have it on a resume. So that's just my comment. If you have any, if you have any response to that, by all means. Uh, let it rip. This is Peter Thank Fletcher. You. To be fair, uh, since I moderate the meetings, Rena has come to board meetings in the past. She comes to community outreach meetings. She comes to the education meetings. She comes to a lot of committee meetings. So I've seen no lack of interest or stamina. I'm, I'm, what I'm asking for, Peter, is, is the commitment that a member, that an elected member because you'd be in the same position as any elected member. You'd yeah. be voting right along with the rest of us. All right. I, hey, guys, that, that's enough of that. That's filling in for Dante. That's enough of that back and forth. So Rena should either answer. So Rena, if you can respond to yeah. that, I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the advice and, and for your um, counsel. I, I appreciate it. So, yes, I have considered this, um, and I do understand that it is uh, extremely time-consuming. Um, I should tell you that I have been advocating for public education over the past four years since my son began uh, kindergarten at my local elementary school. And that I have done that all that all my own without compensation, as you said, and that and I decided that maybe the best approach is to join my local uh, governance board and see if that will be uh, the best way for me to help my community. And I do understand that there are many meetings um, and I do attend. Um, if you may do a, a review of the attendance um, uh, roll call over the past month. And I have been there always. And before, and I also, like I said earlier, I attend the uh, LAUSD board meeting. I attend LAUSD uh, 
numerous other meetings that they, they may have where they share information to the public. And so uh, I have considered it. And, and yes, I, am, I have put my name on the ballot because uh, I'm ready to do, uh, to make a difference and help. Thank you. Ray Cole has his hand up. Hey, Rena, thank you so much for um, stepping up and I really appreciate you being at the Homelessness Committee meeting. I know that you are uh, have a big passion for education. What would be your, uh, if you look at the committees and thinking about the committees that you want to join, what would be your second mm -hmm. choice? Oh, um, I, I like governance. I'm, I was interested in that. I, you know, I've attended several, um, I, I've said that I, I believe I attended all the committee meetings over the past month. Um, maybe I've skipped one or two. Uh, uh, one one uh, committee was like five minutes and I was five minutes late and then it was over. <laughs> so um, I do, um, I think governance would be a second committee that I would like to maybe explore and see if I can be of help there. Um, you know, but I, I'm open to any any place where we need help. And if my skill set and if I am able to uh, fulfill that position in another way, I'm I'm ready for that as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. No more hands. Thank thank you everyone, and thank you for your questions. I really appreciate your. Uh, your, your advice, and um, I, I look forward to working with you either in this position or in another. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Raina. Um, is uh, Mark Schwartz with us? Mark is on. He's unmuted. Hi. Thank you, and good evening. Uh, I'm Mark Schwartz, and I'd like to be also be considered for the open Area 1 position on the Neighborhood Council. I was born and raised in the San Fernando Valley by a single mother. I graduated from Grant High School, as did my wife. And after college and postgraduate training, we returned in 1988 and have been here ever since. We currently live in the Carlton Terrace section of Area 1. We have two sons, one 28, that lives in Culver City, and the other is 34 and lives in Boston and recently made us grandparents. I've been a practicing physician for 30 years, and for the last 20 years, I have served the Woodland Hills community as a radiologist at Kaiser Woodland Hills. I've been the assistant chief and the chief of radiology, leading a department of 200 people, as well as participating in hospital committees. As an administrative physician, I have leadership training and experience in communication, achieving consensus, budgeting, quality assurance, forecasting, and leading meetings. My commitment to Woodland Hills community extends beyond my work at Kaiser. I'm also a community police volunteer for the Topanga Division of the LAPD. As a volunteer, I have focused on community patrols of the Woodland Hills and adjacent neighborhoods and shopping malls to extend the eyes and ears of the police. Uh, we extend their presence in areas of known increased crime and hope to mitigate future crime by doing things like telling people if their garage doors open, looking for the porch bandits we all have, and just playing the police radio really loud in areas of concern. I recently received a radar meeting, so if you see me out in my gun, uh, wave and slow down, or you may be getting a letter from the LAPD. On a very local level, I'm a member of the Neighborhood Watch and Save Our School Food Coalition. I participate in the Neighborhood Watch meetings, often with Officer Dinsey, and help passing out flyers, announcing community meetings, and collecting signatures for our Save Our School petitions. Soon I will be retiring from working full time, and I would like to continue my community involvement by joining the Neighborhood Council. I believe I can bring my medical knowledge to public health and safety issues. For example, this past year was full of misunderstandings and confusion regarding the pandemic, and I've been able to, I may have been able to bring facts and clarity to the situation we face and help with public messaging and outreach. I'm an advocate for emergency preparedness. We were impacted by the 1994 earthquake. We were out of our house for two years. That has left me with a personal passion, uh, perhaps an obsessive compulsion to be uh, prepared for emergencies. For these reasons, I think I would be useful to the Public Safety and Transportation Committee, but would be willing to serve on any committee you thought necessary. My number one goal over time is to be able to listen and understand differing opinions 
and do what I can to foster cooperation and achieve consensus on some of our local issues. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope I can be a positive addition to the council. Thank you. Are there any questions for uh, Mark? Angela Dawson. Hi, thank you. This is Angela Dawson. Um, thank you, Mr. or Dr. Schwartz, for um, wanting to be part of the neighborhood council. Um, I was just listening intently about uh, what your volunteer work has entailed. And it seems you have an extensive uh, resume in terms of volunteering and being part of the community. Um, I particularly am interested in your um, background in health and safety, um, particularly at this time with COVID apparently going to be lingering for some time. Um, you mentioned that your interest is in the transportation committee, but I think I missed the other area that you were interested in. So can you just clarify that for me? It was public safety and transportation. Public safety. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate it. It seems like these issues uh, fit best into that committee, that committee. So uh, public outreach, public messaging, I think I could help. Perfect, thank you very much. Chris Rowe has her hand up, but should we entertain questions from the public? Absolutely. Okay, Chris, go ahead. Hi, I just, I listened to both candidates and both of them have very good resumes. Um, I was particularly interested in Dr. Schwartz because I went through a similar experience with the Northridge quake. So I'm also interested in emergency preparedness, but what I thought was, uh, could be beneficial for your board is if there was a public health committee, just like there's a public health committee at the, uh, at city council where we could address issues because I'm constantly bringing up public health, environmental health issues. I'm a public health advocate, as you all know. And so um, maybe, you know, a new committee could be formed uh, related to public health and public safety in addition to emergency preparedness. So I just wanted to run that by the board as a as a thought after hearing what he had to say. Thank you. Shepard has, Shepherd has his hand up. Uh, hi. Hello, Dr. Schwartz, welcome. Um, for, first, uh, I, I would like to say uh, to both, um, both, both of you that regardless of who uh, gets, uh, wins it, uh, uh, anointed today, uh, the committees are something where we really need stakeholders. And in fact, we're limited to the number of stakeholders we, we can have. And as the chair of public safety and transportation, you do sound like you'd be an excellent uh, addition to the committee either way, whether as a board member or as a stakeholder. Um, and uh, so I, I, don't, I think everybody should, should know we, have, we clearly have two very talented people here today. Um, what I would ask you is, sir, I would just restate uh, what Mr. McCarthy asked of Ms. McCaughey, and that is, you know, how do you feel about the time commitment and all of those things that the board asks for from our various board members? If you could speak mm -hmm. to that. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be a gradual process. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of history, uh, a lot to learn, um, and I think that'll take a lot of time before I can dive in and, and be um, contributory. So I, I, I think it's, a, there would be a ramp up period. I understand it's a lot of time. I understand uh, there's a lot of reading and understanding. I think, um, first thing I need to do is understand all the bylaws and, and the history of, our, of this council. But I understand it's a lot of work. I mean, um, that's part of why I'm, I'm doing this, uh, near retirement. I mean, I can't work, you know, I, I work a lot more than full time. I can't do this entirely and work more than full time. But I understand that. I think we both do. And uh, I, I, you know, I think we both would be willing to put in the work. Thank you. 
Hello. Karen DiBiase. Hey, this is. Just unmuting myself. This is Karen DiBiase. Uh, hi, Mark. Um, I want to ask probably the same question of you that Marty asked of Rena, and that is we have several vacant school sites in uh, the Woodland Hills Warner Center area, uh, and I'd like to know your opinions on, on using those empty sites and what you think they should be used for. Uh, long term for our community? Well, I mean, in all fairness, as I mentioned, I've already been participating in the Save Our Schools uh, Coalition as part of the WHO. So uh, I think that says uh, my position and what I've been doing to advocate. I mean, my understanding is that this Warner 2030, 2035 plan, we're going to have uh, 20 plus thousand new apartment units, uh, many we have already. Uh, in the area, and that's just going to create a lot. I can't see why it wouldn't create a lot of demand. Um, on one hand, my understanding is the school the school board has told the developers that there's going to be thousands of new students, and so they needed a lot of money from the developers. But uh, when some of the coalition met with the school, they said apartments don't have kids, and so that there's no need for new kids. And if there was, we could just put. Um, we could put trailers on playgrounds. And I, I just don't think that that is the long-term solution. Um, you know, a lot of the, the children in our area leave our area to go to school. A lot go to Oak Park, a lot go to uh, um, Virginus School District, a lot go to private school. And I think it would be best for the neighborhood in the long-term to have schools in the neighborhood that could, um, that could foster more of a community and have better education. And we wouldn't have to send people 15 miles away to go to school. Uh, you know, I know that the homelessness problem we have is huge and, and affordability is a huge problem. We can't ignore that. But some of these properties, uh, once they're gone, they're gone. They're no going back. Uh, even though they may be leased out, they're gonna be leases for 99 years. And if they're gonna be swapped, like they've talked about, then they walk away from it and they have no concern, interest um, in what goes there. And because of the new, the new state laws, none of us have any impact or say uh, over the zoning of these pieces of property. So my understanding is that they need to be left for schools. Now, some may be better for schools than others. Some may be a little more appropriate for other uses than others. They're not all the same. Some are on main streets, some are away from main streets. So, um, but my position in the Save Our Schools is, says how I feel. Thank you. Marty Lipkin. Uh, sorry. Hi, Mark. This is Marty Lipkin. Um, since Karen asked the question I was going to ask, let me ask another one. And that is, uh, what do you think the two biggest problems are impacting, um, you're going to be representing area one. So let's just confine it to area one. What do you think the two biggest problems impacting area one are and uh, any insights into how they might be so, well, I think um, homelessness, um, mental illness, drug addiction, I think they're all part of the, often part of the same, not always, but often part. And so I think that is the, one of the biggest issues for our area for, and it's not obviously um, confined to area one, um, but I think that's a huge issue. I, I'm not sure that our society is, appro is approaching it the right way. Um, and that is probably a, a different discussion. But I think that's, that's a huge issue. Um, and it just affects so many things. And I, I think small businesses are having a hard time. Um, the homelessness is, is making it difficult for some businesses. Uh, 
to stay open in, in addition to the pandemic and the closures. Um, so it's probably one, two, and three for, for me as I see that. I mean, there's, there's huge national issues, you know, with, with uh, the recession I still think may be coming and uh, people that have lost their jobs and, you know, the, the food insecurity. I think those are all huge issues and they affect us as much as anywhere else. But, um, you know, I would have to say that the homelessness, drug addiction, mental illness are the biggest uh, factors for the brain. Uh, Nancy, Nancy McLean. Nancy, you have to unmute. I'm sorry, am I unmuted? Yes. Okay, um, both of these candidates are great and I hate to see one of them not being on the board. And did I hear you right Peter, when you said that there's going to also be an at-large um, spot? I think Shepard said that, but yes, at-large is open. All so, things. you know, I would like to see both of these people on the board. And that's just um, my comment. Thank you. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. We're only considering the one position tonight. Right. That's on our agenda, so we cannot consider uh, whether somebody could could uh, figure into another position. So unfortunately, we can only decide on one of these candidates this evening. That's my right. comment. Sorry. We have one stakeholder, Caleb. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just a little concerned, especially given that a lot of what we're going to be talking about tonight is revolving around grievances and violations of rules and procedures. And I just witnessed multiple individuals, in particular, Mr. McCarthy, actually suggesting that someone was just like speculating about what their intentions were or how the capacity in which they were going to work with this board. So it seemed a little biased from the jump and then you had another person ask this individual reina if she supported defunding the police which is a very very politicized statement so if you were about to make some sort of deliberation of sorts it seems as if you've already sort of set <laughs> you've set the scene for a pretty biased conversation about whom you're going to consider for this position so just wanted to point out that i just i find it a little troubling that we're here tonight to talk largely about grievances and issues with rules and procedures. And yet again, there sort of seem to be some, some biases that are working their way into this body and the way in which you govern yourselves. Okay, no more hands are raised. Hello, um, it's Jenny Sand. I can't get my hand thing to work. Hello? Go ahead, Jenny. Oh, thank you. Um, Dr. Schwartz, I appreciate um, all of your volunteer work. You mentioned a couple of times um, the SOS Save Our Schools um, the movement or whatever. It is. Can you talk a little bit more about that, what it is and, and how you're involved? Well, the Woodland Hills Homeowners Association uh, developed a coalition um, to advocate uh, for keeping these properties as schools uh, for future education. And um, I've been supporting that by, you know, gathering, we, we presented petitions to the school board, uh, we passed out flyers in the neighborhood to alert them to meetings, you know, Zoom meetings that they can listen into. Um, so it's basically about the, the, the properties that are possibly for sale and saving them for the schools. I mean, part of it, we just okay. didn't feel like we had a, a say, you know, uh, they announced when this first came up, it's been almost three years, the school board um, put it on as a last minute item to the agenda. And there were a lot of people that were in favor of using the schools for other things were notified ahead of time. And the people that, the community members uh, were never notified. And it, we wanna have a seat at the table about what's gonna happen to these schools. Thank you. Um, 
there any other questions or comments? There be none at this time, we will take a roll call vote. The way we will choose um, one of the candidates for tonight is just simply when your name is called, please state the person that you would like to select tonight. And Karen, can you please do that? Sure, this is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. Um, Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant votes for Reyna. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase will vote for Mark. Paul Lawler. <clears throat> Paul Lawler abstains. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes for Dr. Mark Schwartz. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes for Dr. Mark Schwartz. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes for Dr. Mark Schwartz. Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes for Raina McCarthy. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes for Raina. Marty Lipkin. Had to unmute, sorry. Marty Lipkin votes for uh, Dr. Schwartz. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss says it's a very close call, but she votes for Dr. Schwartz and wishes Raina well. Austin Rocker. This is Austin Rocker. I vote for Raina McCahey. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes for Dr. Schwartz, although I'd like to vote for both. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes for Dr. Schwartz, but she hopes that Raina will continue um, to work with the Neighborhood Council and perhaps apply for another position. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon <clears throat> votes for Mark Schwartz, but I agree that Raina is fantastic candidate and hope she stays involved. August Stoyer. August Stoyer votes for Raina Makahi. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes for Dr. Schwartz, but I also hope that Raina stays involved as an alternate, hopefully. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher abstains. Hutan Hermosian. Um, Hutan Hermosian votes for Dr. Schultz. Shepard Kaufman. Uh, Shepard Kaufman also wishes we could have both at, the, at this moment, but I vote for uh, Rita McCauley. All right, let me total it up, please. Okay, this is Karen G. Biazzi, Assistant uh, Secretary. The vote is Raina six, Mark 11, abstain is two for a total of 19 voting members. Uh, congratulations, Mark. And I also agree that it would be great if uh, Raina stays involved and is considered for future open positions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank both of you very much for attending tonight. We will now move on to item number two, Treasurer Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler here. Item number two, monthly expense report MER, November 2020, discussion and possible action. 
motion to approve the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council budget fiscal year 2021 monthly expense reconciliation for November 2020. John McCarthy seconds. We will now open discussion on the November 2020 uh, monthly expenditure report. Oh, I'm sorry. It, um, Sean, did you second? Yes, I did. Thank yes, you, Sean. He, yes, you did. Is there any discussion? There appears to be no discussion, so we will now take a roll call vote to approve our November expenditure report. Karen? Okay, this is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. Uh, Aaron Quantz. Aaron Quantz, vote yes. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase, vote yes. Paul Lawler. Uh, Paul Lawler votes yes. John McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes yes. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes yes. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker abstains. I was not part of the council in November. Okay. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Ilblon. Gilbert Ilblon votes yes. August Durer. August Durer is ineligible. Uh, Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Bhutan Hermosian. Bhutan Hermosian, yes. yes. <laughs> and Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman, yes. Okay, this is Karen Gibiazzi, Assistant Secretary with the count. 17, yes, zero, no, one abstain, one ineligible for a total of 19, and the motion passes. Thank you very much, Karen. Item number three, tre Treasurer Paul Aller. Item 21003, monthly expense report, MER, December 2020. Discussion and possible action. Motion to approve the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council budget fiscal year 2021 monthly expense reconciliation for December 2020. John McCarthy uh, seconds. Sorry, uh, sorry, Aaron. If you'd rather, I'll okay. withdraw my second in favor of Aaron. Aaron Quant second. Okay. Marty Lipkin has his hand up. No, oh, no, he doesn't. Sean McCarthy has his hand up. My concern, and this is Sean McCarthy. My concern is that is is what we were told by uh, the the fellow from from uh, Dunn, the uh, budget person. Uh, are we going to are we going to get squeezed with the money that that uh, we already have? Are they going to ask for our money back? Anything back from us, Paul? Are we going to and and are we going to see a, a a decrease in the amount of money that we've been given? in the past? 
I've heard nothing to that effect. And I think the money's already dedicated in the city budget. And when an item is dedicated, it can't be removed or changed. Okay. Joyce, you might want to add to that. Uh, yes, I've asked that question um, um, at the beginning of the fiscal year, and I asked it again in um, December, and no, uh, there will be no funds taken from the neighborhood councils. Thank you. That, that is all. Are there any other questions? Uh, Chris Rowe, I believe, has her hand up. Go ahead, Chris. Hi, this is Chris Rowe again. I just wanted to thank the board uh, for the allocations that you've made, uh, like for example, to the Pierce uh, College, to, to the homeless students or those in need, and uh, to the West Valley Food Pantry, as well as the Occupational Center. I'd like to see, while we're at this time of food insecurity, um, more of your funds in the future dedicated in similar allocations. As we all know, the West Valley Food Pantry feeds Woodland Hills and, and West Hills and other surrounding neighborhoods. And I've donated twice to them myself this year. And I, I just really feel at this time in our lives that helping with food insecurity or helping in any way you can with homeless issues is is a good way of spending your money at a time that we're all under stay at home. Thank you. Chris, are there any other comments or questions? No. Okay, there being none, Karen, can you take roll call vote? Yes, I can. This is Karen DiBiase, the Assistant Secretary. Uh, this is for item number three, the December MER. Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant votes yes. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase votes yes. Uh, Paul Lawler. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, Paul Lawler votes yes. Thank you. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole. This is Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes yes. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes yes. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes. Um, Austin Rocker. This is Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman <clears throat> votes yes. Gilbert Yellowblond. Gilbert Yellowblond votes yes. August Steuer. August Steuer is ineligible. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, yes. And Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes yes. Okay, so the vote for item number three. 18, yes. Zero, no, one ineligible for a total of 19, the motion passes. Karen? Thank you. Next, Thank we you will everyone. move on. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for all the work you do. Next, we will move on to item number four, President Joyce Fletcher. Motion to allow both elected and appointed board members to serve as secretary. Motion for the board to allow both elected and appointed board members to be nominated to serve as secretary of the board. In July, 2019, the board approved to nominate and elect appointed board member, Paul Lawler to be treasurer. 
alternate board members cannot serve as officers. Article six, officers, section one, section one, officers of the board, the officers of the board shall consist of a president, a vice president, a treasurer, a secretary, and a parliamentarian. These officers shall be elected by the board as provided below and all must be elected members of the board. Do I have a second? I'll second, Jenny Sand will second. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, the motion is now open for discussion. Okay. Really need to discuss this. Uh, Aaron Quant, uh, is this a permanent addition or is there a sunset uh, date on this? Um, all um, <clears throat> at, at the end of the 2021 election, uh, there will be an appointment. First, the new board members will be seated. And after the new board members are seated, there will be an election for new officers. Mm -hmm. Every time there's an election or every, um, yes, every time there's an election, there's a reappointment of officers. Well, yeah, but the, uh, the, the appointed versus the non-appointed, this will be a permanent addition to our bylaws? Or there's no, uh, no, uh, no, uh, this, will, this appointment will only last and, and the, the the decision to um, to um, allow appointed board members to serve would only apply to this one specific uh, motion. Thank you. We can't amend the bylaws. Are there any other questions or comments? Lauren, her hat, Lauren has her hand up. Um, this is Lauren Kaufman. I just want um, the minutes to reflect. I believe my name should be listed under appointed board members on the minute, on, on the agenda. Yes, Lauren, uh, I apologize for um, that mistake. Lauren should be listed under appointed board members. Sean McCarthy. Yes, this is Sean McCarthy. Um, I'm going to ask the the uh, question that nobody else has asked so far. So, has anybody said that they want to be secretary? Question mark. We will nominate. Uh, the next agenda item will nominate um, people who wish to serve as secretary. Uh, this motion is just to allow both elected and appointed board members to be considered. Thank you. Ray Cole. Thank you, Ray Cole. This is, uh, I just had the same thing as Lauren. I didn't see my name listed, so I was wondering why. I'm sorry. I apologize to everyone who didn't get listed. So appointed board members are Ray Cole. In addition to the members listed are Ray Cole and Lauren Kaufman. Ray, I think you're an alternate. Oh. Alternate. Alternate board members uh, cannot be appointed uh, as officers. Okay, thanks. And Ray, I, didn't, I didn't forget about you. And Ray was elected, I believe. Yes. But he switched with Brian and now he's an alternate. Mm -hmm. uh, Dina White. Hi there. So I just, uh, sorry to be dense, but I'm an alternate too. So uh, is that why I'm not on the list? Yes, alternates can't be elected as officers. All right. Thank you. Okay. That's all yeah. the hands. Okay, so uh, Karen, would you like to take a roll call vote? Hey, would you like for me Karen. to read the motion? Should I read the motion again? We're not electing an, the secretary now. That's the next motion. This motion is to simply allow both elected and appointed board members to be secretary. Okay, thank you. 
Hey, this is for this is Karen DiBiase, Assistant Secretary. This is item number four. Uh, Aaron Quant. Uh, Aaron Quant, can you come back to me, please? Of course. Uh, Karen DiBiase. Uh, Karen DiBiase is going to abstain. Uh, Paul Lawler. Uh, Paul Lawler votes yes, please. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole. Ray Cole, Ray Cole abstains. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes yes. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes yes. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Ilblan. Oh, but yeah, blind votes, yes. Uh, August Stoyer. August Stoyer votes, yes. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes, yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, yes. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes, yes. And back to Aaron Quant. After much, after much thought, Aaron Quant votes yes. Thank you all very much. Let me give the vote. <laughs> all right, so this is Karen Gibiazzi, Assistant Secretary. The vote is 17 yes, zero no. To abstain for a total of 19 motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number five, President Joyce Fletcher, officer election for secretary of the board. The president of the board shall entertain nominations from the board for replacement for secretary of the board. Article six, officers, section three, selection of officers officer terms. No president or vice president shall serve more than two consecutive two-year terms in that office unless this provision is waived by two-thirds vote of the board. In the event of a permanent vacancy in the office of president, the vice president shall become the president for the remainder of the president's term. In the event of a permanent vacancy in the office of vice president, treasurer, or secretary, the presiding officer shall entertain nominations from the board for a replacement who shall be seated after approval by a majority of the board of directors present. The replacement shall serve for the remainder of the term of the office being filled. Article six, officer section two, duties and secretary, I'm sorry, duties and powers secretary. Secretary, the secretary shall keep the minutes of the neighborhood council. See that all notices are given in accordance with the provisions of these bylaws. Be custodian of the neighborhood council's non-financial records and perform all other duties as requested by the president and or the board. The secretary shall keep the bylaws and standing rules up to date and shall keep an official list of all representatives, alternates, and committee members and their terms, and shall keep a register of the addresses, including electronic address if applicable, the telephone numbers of each representative and alternate. The board shall appoint an assistant secretary who shall assist the secretary with all duties and act in his or her absence. I second. Thank you very much. Marty Lipkin. Thank second. you. 
The president of the board will now take nominations for secretary. Can you please raise your hand and so that Peter can call on you? Angela I Dawson. This is Angela Dawson. I nominate uh, Karen DiBiase. Can we please roll up to the list, Peter, so everyone can see the list? Sure. So Karen DiBiase has been nominated. Are there other nominations? This is Dina Weiss. I would like to second that nomination for Karen, who I think has been doing an excellent job. Are there any other nominations from the board? Uh, Joyce, this, yes, is Marty. Marty. this is Marty Lipkin. I'd like to ask that the, uh, the board consider a unanimous consent on this nomination. can't do um, a consent, but we can do a roll call vote if there are no further nominations. There appear to be none. So Karen, can you take a roll call vote for the nomination of Karen DiBiase to be secretary of the, of the board? Right, this is Karen DiBiase, assistant secretary, item number five. Uh, Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant, go area one, uh, vote yes. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase votes yes, and thank you very much for the nomination. Uh, Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes yes. Thank you for doing this, Karen. I'm having fun with it. Sean McCarthy. Uh, uh, this is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy <laughs> says yes. Uh, Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes with a huge thank you. <laughs> Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes and thank you as well. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes yes. Uh, Marty Lipkin. A very enthusiastic yes from Marty Lipkin. Uh, Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes, and I'm so glad you're having fun doing this, Karen. Good for you. <laughs> That's amazing. I am happy. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Uh, Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes emphatically yes. Uh, Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. You? Uh, Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon votes yes, and thank you very much, Karen. <laughs> August Stoyer. August Stoyer votes thankfully yes for Karen DiBiase. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes a uh, very grateful yes, even though you're extremely peculiar for finding this fun. <laughs> uh, Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Uh, Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, yes, and thank you, Karen. Uh, Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes yes, and I thank you and uh, for you getting, and appreciate that you're getting the official recognition for the work you, you've been doing. All right, so Karen DiBiase in her last role as assistant secretary, uh, the vote for item number five is 19 yes, zero no for a total of 19 for the motion passes. I wanna say thank you everybody for your vote of confidence and I am having fun with this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Karen. We appreciate all you do. Next, we will move on to item number six, governance committee. <laughs> Since Don Patterson is not here, uh, Shepard, can you take over uh, this item? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, Relative to the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council Board responding to grievance number 267, 268, 269, 
270, 271, 270, and 272 relative to agenda item number one on the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council November 10th, 2020 special board meeting agenda. This is to adopt a possible remedy related to Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council bylaw article eight, section four, which is related to bylaw article five, section three. Um, uh, all right, I'll read the whole motion. But whereas uh, per WHWCNC bylaws, Article 5, Section 3, official actions of simple majority vote by the board members present and voting, including abstentions, which act as a yes vote, shall be required to pass motions which deal with policy matters in neighborhood council and to pass motions of administrative nature, e.g., approval of minutes, treasurer supports motion to adjourn. Um, actually, we don't, if everybody's read this, I could simply make the, the the, the, here, the issue here is that this is a motion to address the issue brought, brought uh, Excuse me, oh, I'm oh, sorry, oh. Shep, but you are required to read the whole motion. Oh, well, or not, but okay, I will. Thank um, you, Chip. The presiding officer may vote on all motions. B, voting by proxy shall not be allowed. C, the alternate representative may vote only when the representative is absent. D, in the event that an elected representative is absent or recuses him or herself, the alternate for the area shall take his or her place. Whereas the bylaws per Article 5, Section 3 include the following language, including abstentions, which act as a yes vote, and whereas the bylaws do not address abstentions acts as a yes vote related to reconsideration in bylaw Article 8, Section 4, and whereas Robert's Rules do not, does not address abstentions which act as a yes vote, whereas Robert's Rules offer only three types of voting, yes, no, or abstain, which does not count as a yes vote nor counts as a no vote and does not affect the outcome of the vote as abstain is considered to be a non-vote. Therefore, Robert's Rules of also Order also does not address whether a person who abstains per our bylaws can ask for a reconsideration. Whereas Robert's Rules of Order only states a person can ask for a reconsideration if they are on the prevailing side of a vote. Whereas per Empower LA, the WHWCNC bylaws which contain the language abstentions, which acts as a yes vote, cannot be amended until after the 2021 WHWCNC election or June, July, 2021. Therefore, the governance committee requests the board approve the following standing rule number 27, standing rule 27. As of January 13th, 2021, a board member who abstains cannot ask for a reconsideration. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Peter Fletcher, I'll second. Thank you very much. And now the um, motion is open for discussion. There will be one minute discussion for um, each person and we will start with the board. Marty Lipkin. Yes, have I have an alternate motion that I would like to enter in place of the, in place of the motion that's been preferred. And my alternate motion reads as follows. All Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council board motions requiring a vote shall only offer the possibility of a yes or a no vote. Any board member who wishes to abstain from a vote shall be given the opportunity to temporarily leave the meeting for a, and I'll call it a personal break. It could be a bathroom break, whatever, until the vote of the remaining members has been taken and finalized in order to maintain the integrity of an abstention as defined in Robert's Rules of Order without impacting the established meeting quorum or triggering that member's possible replacement by an alternate member at the meeting in progress. That is my alternate motion that I am offering in place of the one that the Governance Committee is offering. If you'd like, I'll read it again. Um, excuse me for just a moment. Okay. Um, I will remind uh, the board that we cannot have any language that amends a bylaw. We cannot amend our bylaws per Robert Rules of Order until after the 2021 Neighborhood Council election. So if, if your substitute motion in any way alters the language of our bylaws, then um, that can't happen. That's why we're creating a standing rule. 
No, it does not alter the existing rule. What it says is we only offer a yes or no option, which takes away the argument of the abstention, which is, in my view, personal view, illegally. Oh, uh, wait, wait, no. it's, not, it's not altering the standing rules. It's saying we give the person who thinks he's going or she is going to be uh, uh, voting Marty, abstain. Marty, yes. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it, are you making a substitute motion? Yes. If you're making a substitute motion, then that substitute motion has to be second, and then we will have discussion. Okay. Aaron Quant seconds Martin Lipkin's motion. Okay, so um, the, the substitute motion has been second. And Marty, um, do you have that written or anything so that we can put it up on the screen? It seems like a fairly long substitute motion. I sent it to you, did I not, Joyce? I don't think I received it. It's in your emails, but... Uh, um, Marty, why don't you send it to me? I'll make a PDF and put it on the screen. Okay. Let me Okay, I will forward this to which Peter do you want? My neighborhood council email address. Okay. Send. It has been sent to you now. Okay, I'm refreshing. While I wait for it, why don't you have discussion? <laughs> Um, Joyce, can I make a comment? This is Lauren Kaufman. Go ahead, Lauren. Thanks, Peter. Um, well, I, th I think, um, Marty, your motion, um, if, if I understand this correctly, on page five, the first whereas refers to our bylaws, um, Article 5, Section 3, that it includes the following language, including abstentions, which act as a yes vote. So the bylaws address and acknowledge that we have abstentions and they count as a yes vote. So your motion is taking away abstentions and I don't, we can't change the bylaws. So I don't think it works. Can I respond to that, Joyce? Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm sorry, but actually we need to get the substitute motion on the screen so that everyone can read it. Sure. And then after everyone has absorbed uh, the language in the substitute motion, then uh, we can, ha it has been second. So uh, then we can have discussion. So if everyone could be patient for just a minute or so, then we will read the substitute motion. Peter, have you gotten it? I have not. <sighs> uh, Marty, did you send it to peter.fletcher at whcouncil.org? Uh, not sure, but I'll, I'll reset. Oh, uh, here it is. I just got it. Uh, only change I'd make is change alternate to substitute. I gotta make a PDF of it, hang on.
Okay, here we go. It's on the screen. I will give everyone uh, a couple of minutes uh, to read the substitute motion. Again, can we call this a uh, substitute as opposed to alternate? Yes, it will, it will be called a substitute motion. Thank you. So everyone has it on your screen and uh, the uh, substitute motion is now open for discussion. John McCarthy. I Honestly, uh, either my computer is not very good, but it is so small, I can't read any of it. So I'm, I'm kind of out of luck here. And the, the second thing is this, with this particular motion, the original motion, this is only gonna last until the, until the election of this year, is that correct? Until May, and then we're gonna have to go back and, and redo this again? We do our bylaws. Yes. Right, okay. Clarify it. So this will just last until the next our our, our upcoming elections in. Well, no, doing the, redoing the bylaws takes months. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but we can't have back and I, forth. I, no, I I just want to make sure I understand the motion that the original motion is a motion that is going to be in place until the by, bylaws are rewritten, which will be either when the election takes or takes place or sometime thereafter. Marty's motion is an alternative to the one section in there that refers. I would to like to remind the board. And this will be my last reminder. We cannot use any language that in any way affects the wording of the bylaws. The only thing that we can do is create standing rules. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey Kaufman. Thank you. Um, I would uh, also agree with, uh, with what Lauren said. Abstentions are mentioned three times within our bylaws, so I do not believe it would be proper uh, proper to, to the, the substitute motion would not be proper and would be deemed in that, I believe, personally. Thank you. Uh, no other board members have their hands raised. You want public comment? Joyce, public comment? Yes, public comment only on the substitute motion. Okay, Christine Rowe. Hi, this is Chris Rowe. I believe that uh, because of your existing bylaws that this substitute motion would not be appropriate. And I think you've had several abstentions already this evening, so... Um, I, I just don't support this alternate motion. With due respect to Marty, by the way. Zach Violet. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, first of all, Joyce, we never got public comment on the original motion, uh, which we should have, but- um, uh, this... Excuse me, sir. We are discussing the substitute motion. <laughs> We are not discussing okay, the Okay, Joyce, motion. I'll get right to it. Uh, the um, substitute motion, I don't even know how you guys think this would, could possibly work. Um, people are gonna get up and, and, and leave the room if they have to abstain, and then they're gonna come back at another time. Are you gonna keep all the track of all that in the minutes? I mean, it, it really doesn't even seem like a plausible idea. And I, I think everybody who's, said already, this is changing your bylaws. So you can't do it. Thank you. Caleb. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, I'm just a little, I'm a little confused here. Uh, the motion, which I understand Joyce, we're not currently discussing, but the previous motion, which led to us having this new conversation about a new motion or an alternative motion, explicitly says that all of this is prohibited until your elections that are happening in, in June or July of next year. So it seems like you are now trying to pass an additional thing that is invalid from the jump. And so I'm just like really confused while we're are wasting our time doing this it just okay i would i to help members of the public and to help the board the board has both bylaws and standing rules standing rules are separate from the bylaws and the board is allowed at any time to create a standing rule the standing rule though cannot override a bylaw So um, the only thing that we can do in relation to uh, concerns about abstentions is create a standing rule. We cannot do anything that changes the language of the bylaws, but we can create standing rules at any time. Okay, Nigel. Uh, yeah, I, I just think this is kind of like a smoke screen or maybe just like a whole separate issue. I mean, the standing rule is there because of what happened with the blue and fail motion and the standing rule would change that so that what happened with that motion that caused all of the ethical violations that it caused and confusion that it caused wouldn't happen again. So I don't know why you guys are trying to not like the standing rule is to fix a very specific thing that you guys got wrong. So I don't know why you're not just approving that and trying to make it more complicated for yourselves with something that might change your bylaws. It doesn't make sense. Just go back to the original motion. We can't go back to the original motion until we vote on the substitute motion. If it fails, we go back and vote on the original motion, but we have to go through this process. Brenda Smith. Hi y'all, um, thanks so much for having me. I just, I think I understand what's going on. So I pulled up your bylaws just to check and it does say in section three under official actions, a simple majority vote by the board members present in voting, including abstentions. So I feel like since your bylaws specifically state that abstentions exist, I feel like taking them out would in fact be against the, the very nature of your bylaws and thus in my opinion, could only be dealt with by standing rules. Also, if you're gonna have to record everybody going in and out and in and out, I'm just feeling real bad for Karen, the new secretary, because aren't you gonna have to report that in your um, minutes? And I've just, I've taken minutes before. That gets real darn annoying just trying to keep track of everybody in and out, in and out. I don't want her to have to deal with that. I think the other thing that y'all were talking about in the beginning with the, is the better thing. So that's all I have to say. Thank you all so much for having me. Are there, are there any other comments? Yeah, on there's this? a couple more. There's three more. Any, okay. any stands. Steve R. Yeah. Um, boy, you guys are creating a circus again. 
as you did two months ago and that someone nicely uh, played circus music at. But it's really, you're dancing around this. You're almost kind of, I mean, this whole personal break thing to become almost like, let's call it a bathroom break. It's really kind of almost people leaving and coming back. That's a recusal but you don't want to change the bylaws because you can't do that. So we're going to make standing rules, but you're just convoluting everything. And technically point of order. I know we have to vote on this one first, but you should have had public comment on that previous one before you came to the second one. Actually, a substitute motion has to be addressed first. Albert. Hi, everyone. My name's Albert. Uh, yeah, I just got to echo everyone's sentiment here. This feels like a distraction from the main uh, motion, the grievances. Um, this, uh, this is in violation of your bylaws if you were to uh, vote a yes on this motion. Also, the language of this alternate motion is poorly written. There's too much vague language in here. Uh, what is a personal break? What what version of Robert's rules of orders are you citing here? What what is what are you addressing with this alternate motion? Uh, like a caller before me said, this is a smokescreen to obfuscate the the real issue here is which you guys broke your own rules. And there needs to be accountability for that. Okay, um, August Doyer. Hi, while I don't necessarily agree with this substitute motion, I don't agree that it is against the bylaws because the bylaws do not specifically state that board members must be offered the opportunity to abstain. It just acknowledges that there could be abstentions, but it doesn't mandate that they, you have to uh, uh, allow abstentions. Um, and I don't believe it's been proven that we violated the bylaws at, in a previous meeting because it was ambiguous as to what was right or wrong. So how can you violate something that has not been stated? Thank you, August. Marty Lipkin. Yeah, um, let me just make a couple of very quick comments. First of all, the, uh, the folks that are there dealing with the, uh, the, the previous brouhaha, this really isn't just stemming from that. We've had problems in the, the last two, three, four years with this problem of abstentions being counted as yes votes, which absolutely skews a lot of voting and is also uh, uh, violates what Robert's rules and the ones that are recently published uh, states for abstentions, okay? which is there's an abstention and they're not counted as either yes or no. So this really has very little to do with your uh, uh, question of mine, all right? In fact, this motion would take out that problem and either you get a yes or a no. As far as asking people, you know, gee, who's leaving, who's not, that's easy to do. We've done it in the past before we've always had uh, people that have left and said, I gotta go take a bathroom break or I gotta go take- That's one minute, Marty. Okay, no more hands. I, I would like to say that actually, we do not take personal breaks at board meetings on purpose to avoid a vote, whether it's a yes vote, a no vote or an abstention. So the concept of a personal break to avoid or not vote, I would say, 
and I certainly can't quote it because I've been on the board for 11 years and this has never come up. Certainly not while I've been president have I ever allowed someone to take a personal break to avoid a vote. We should vote on this motion. Yeah. So at this point, uh, I think we need to vote on the substitute motion. Karen? And so, Karen, can you take the roll call vote on the substitute motion? Karen, are you available? She's muted. Oh, there she goes. I'm unmuted now, thank you. Uh, Karen DiBiase, secretary mm -hmm. now. Uh, we're talking about the substitute uh, motion as was presented on the screen. Uh, Aaron Quantz. Aaron Quantz votes no. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase votes no. Uh, Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes no. Uh, Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes no. Uh, Ray Cole. Ray Cole abstains. Uh, Nancy McLean. Nancy? To my left. I'm sorry. I was thinking about abstaining again, but I'm going to vote no. Nancy you McLean caused, vote no. You caused the problem. I know. Uh, Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes no. Uh, Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes no. Par Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes yes. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes no, but thanks Marty Lipkin for thoughtfully preparing the substitute motion. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes no. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes emphatically no. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes no. Gilbert Yildalan. Gilbert Yildalan votes no, but I would like to thank Marty for trying to come up with an outside of the box solution to uh, this issue. August Steuer. August Steuer votes no because the motion is not germane to the item that was on the agenda, which is Reconsideration. Ginny Sands. Ginny Sands votes no. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, no. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, no. Shepard Kaufman. Uh, Shepard Kaufman, no. Thank you. All right, so this is Karen DiBiase, secretary. Uh, the count is one yes, 17 no, one abstain for a total of 19, the substitute motion failed. We will now go back to the original motion. The original motion, um, which uh, resolves the issue of reconsideration is to create a standing rule number 27, which the board is allowed to do at any time. Standing rule number 27, as of January 13th, 2021, a board member who abstains cannot ask for a reconsideration. Are there any uh, comments? I will take comments from the board first, 
and then the public. One minute, please. Did we second this already? Yes. Yes, that was Peter. Okay. You're, you're blonde. Um, the, uh, since it's clear from our bylaws that an abstention is a yes, uh, the, I believe that um, there's really no reason to have this um, as a new uh, uh, standing rule uh, because if you abstain, you're basically saying I go along with the yes votes, um, which I believe gives the person who abstained the right to ask for reconsideration. So um, that's my position. I don't think we did anything wrong. Okay. Shepard Kaufman. Um, Seth, thank you. Uh, just briefly, I just want to say that um, the, the issue with regards to reconsideration and abstentions uh, is not clear cut, even in Robert's rules. And we found numerous uh, opinions both ways about it. But the overriding factor is that our bylaws call an abstention a yes vote. However, they don't specify whether that gives the person the full rights of a yes vote. So uh, under the standing rule, it, simp it does not change the fact that it's a yes vote. However, it clarifies that despite your vote being counted as a yes, even though you abstained, you don't get the full rights, which would include the ability to ask for a reconsideration. The reason that this is here, and it's hard for me to speak to governance because I'm, I'm not on that committee, but the, the reason that this is here is to address one of the grievances uh, that, and it is a proposal as a remedy that will be then eventually sent as with the rest of these that are approved to the grievers. They then can go forward and either choose <laughs> to challenge those uh, to, to done or accept them and everything ends. Um, but, but anyway, the, the issue is simply here in this particular case is to clarify only who can ask for a reconsideration and what, it, what abstaining will mean in relation to that. Thanks. Marty Lipkin. Yes, it's my belief that this motion, the original motion, actually does violate the, uh, the bylaws that are there because the bylaws state, and I don't have it in front of me exactly, but I believe the bylaws state that they are, these people who abstain are counted as the, as, as yes votes. And, and um, removing this basically violates that, uh, um, the way that they're, they're counted and, and the abilities that they have. If you're gonna count them as a yes vote, fine. It's a yes vote. And they should have all the rights and powers of having a yes vote. I don't believe that, that uh, having a standing rule is going to change that. That's why I try to eliminate even having that abstention factor. Okay, that's one minute. But I, 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 I would like to suggest one thing, if I may. Go. I'm, I sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Marty, but... Call in. Hey, Lauren, Marty, Lauren Kaufman. Marty, I'm sorry, but the board, everyone, including the public, can only have one minute on this. I have a point of order. I'd like to know what the city attorney has to say about it. Are you asking a question? Yes. The city attorney feels that. Um, no, this motion. I spoke with the city attorney, uh, or actually, I spoke with Vanessa Serrano, who spoke with the city attorney. And it is up to the board to make these types of decisions. The city attorney does not make decisions about our bylaws because our bylaws are not consistent across the neighborhood council system. Every, every neighborhood council writes their own bylaws. Uh, the only thing that I would say about this is that in fact, our neighborhood council did not write this bylaw. Correct. Uh, in April of 2015, we submitted bylaws. <laughs> and the um, 
language that said abstentions act as a yes vote were not in the bylaws that we sent to Empower LA. Whenever the bylaws came back from Empower LA in September of 2015, Empower LA added this language. Now, uh, it has been um, on the board since 2015 to uh, change this language uh, if we uh, felt that there was a concern about it. However, in the years since 2015 to 2020, we did not change the language. However, last year in 2020, the governance committee did see that there was, could be issues with the language. And so we put in the revised bylaws back in, I believe it was around October when we submitted uh, amended bylaws. We had taken this out of the amended bylaws. However, the board did not vote to approve bylaws in 2020. So these are our bylaws from 2015. Okay. Lauren had her hand up. Lauren. Got Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, I think that this is a good uh, patch, um, temporary patch, for uh, until we can uh, take that out of our bylaws, the issue of an abstention counting as a yes. I do not think, I think if someone gets the full power of a yes vote, then they sh should vote yes. And if you abstain, you really shouldn't have any power beyond abstaining, which is not saying yes or no. So um, I, I, I am in support of this motion that Joyce has written. Um, and I think that abstentions, when we get to the bylaws, should not have the power of a full yes vote. Um, they're just abstaining. Thank okay. you. Aaron Quant. Uh, Aaron, uh, yeah, um, it appears to me that the whole reason why we made it so that abstentions counted as yes votes during roll call, because we were we had roll call votes uh, in financial matters. Um, maybe if we could even change that to uh, uh, so it only reflects financial matters, that might be a good change, a much easier change. Um, as opposed to changing multiple lines of a bylaw or a real war in the future. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Uh, we have four members of the public who would like to speak. Uh, Pilar Chavo. You have one minute. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, we're gonna go on to Zach Violet. Go ahead, Zach. Uh, uh, I would like to support this motion. Um, I think despite what some people on the board are saying, it's very clear that while an abs abstention vote is counted to the yes, it is not an actual yes vote. And so that person cannot initiate a reconsideration vote. But I also would like to say that this issue does not really get to the heart of the issue, which is that you guys need to revoke and invalidate the CIS that you passed on because of this technical issue that you guys messed up on. So thank you, invalidate that CIS. We'll try Pilar Chavo again. Hi, Pilar Chavo, uh, I'm a stakeholder, do work in the Woodland Hills area um, and Warner Center area around homelessness. And, um, and one of the grievance who filed a grievance on this issue, I support the motion tonight. Um, and I'm just very concerned that one of the main issues and the whole reason for filing the grievance is not addressed in any of the items tonight, um, which would be overturning the vote, which was, um, you know, not appropriately done. Um, 
So I'm hoping that either that resolution is figured out tonight or we'll have to move it forward in the process. Thank you. Today, Kennedy. Hi, this is Todd A. Kennedy. Um, I'm a stakeholder in Woodland Hills. Um, yeah, I would urge the board to also support this uh, standing law. Um, however, I just want to take a moment just to express sort of the disheartened feeling that I have with it because um, while that night was chaotic and full of emotion, um, this is what the emotion was uh, revolving around. And, um, you know, I sort of wish that there was just a moment to slow things down on that night and for the board to listen to those upset voices that were trying to express this standing law. Um, and, uh, and it felt as if that motion was sort of forcefully pushed through and incorrectly pushed through. And um, as a stakeholder, as somebody that's trying to get more involved in neighborhood councils, um, it's disheartening to have your voice sort of uh, dismissed and diminished um, and uh, to see later that what you were upset and arguing for um, ended up being the standing law. So um, I appreciate the standing law um, and I hope to uh, have better communication in the future with stakeholders and the board. Um, thank you very much. Steve C. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Steve and I'm a stakeholder and uh, you know, I begrudgingly accept this uh, standing rule change because it kind of fixes the problem. But uh, as previous callers had also said is, I don't see anywhere tonight addressed the original grievance, which is to revoke that CIS. Someone thoughtfully said earlier that we can't go back and redo that night, redo the motion. Yeah, that's correct. You can't, you know, we'd all be at the horse races and stuff. We could do that. But if, what we can do or you can do is to revoke that motion that was voted on and put through inappropriately uh, and revoke that CIS. And please consider that. Thank you. Nigel. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to echo some of those points. I think, uh, I think Laura brought up a good point that this, this standing rule is, is a good patch. Um, I don't think it's going to solve all of your problems, but you know, people who abstain shouldn't really be given the same uh, the same privileges as someone that voted yes. Um, and so I think we should do the same rule. And I also just want to echo some of the previous callers of, you know, getting more to the heart of it. What we really want to see is, is some accountability and for you guys to withdraw the CIS that was, you know, no guy and, and uh, shouldn't really be on the record in the first place. So thanks. Brenda Smith. Hi, y'all. So I just want to say I think that anything that you pass that brings more clarity to what defines how you're voting and what is attached to it is a good thing. So I think this is a very good motion. I think it brings a lot of clarity to the subject of reconsideration. Um, I also want to say that I agree that if what you did was improper in passing that CIS, then I think that you should revoke it. And then if y'all want to look at it again, do that. But I think that you should take a fresh start to it. There's no reason that if you dig a ditch, you have to bury yourself in it. So, you know, get yourself out of a ditch and then figure out where you want to go. Thank you all again. Caleb. Okay, Albert. Wait, hold on. I'm here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be brief. I mean, I mean, everyone's already pretty much made the point, but um, it sounds like this rule would be sort of, as folks have uh, defined it, like a nice patch to sort of address, like, I mean, it's unfortunate. I, I heard some of you saying earlier, like, oh, well, maybe like these bylaws were actually, it sounds like you, you think maybe Empower LA, like fix them once you submitted them. Nevertheless, it would appear as if what you have in your bylaws goes against the actual Robert's rule of orders, which is unfortunate, but nevertheless, like here we are. So abstention shouldn't be a vote. People choose to abstain because they don't want to vote one way or the other. So they should not have a say in a reconsideration. So this is great, but also, yes, like we'd like to see you also revisiting the fact that you did this and submitted a C or 
uh, opposed a CIS or supported a CIS. So we need to we need to revisit that. And we'd like to see that brought up again. Thank you, Albert. Go ahead, Albert. Hi, hi. Um, I think this is an adequate patch. Um, I think this uh, type of change to your bylaws or, or standing standing rules uh, probably go through committee, uh, just like the CIS that should be revoked should have gone to committee. The reason this is happening is because the vote was so narrowly split down the line between this governing board. It needs to be written by a stakeholder and needs to be processed through a committee and stakeholders need to have their input heard. Revoke the CIS, adopt whatever standing laws you need to do to make sure this doesn't happen in the future but do things procedurally correct. Get the input from your stakeholders, hear what they have to say, do the right thing, revoke the CIS and fix the bylaws, fix the standing uh, laws. Thank you. Christine Rowe, go ahead. Yes, I think just like at city council where you fill in a speaker card and, it, and you guys, as you know, when we're at a board meeting, there's speaker cards. Um, several people have declared themselves stakeholders, and I think it would be good if they, they identified how they're a stakeholder, where do they live, for example, because I happen to know that several of these people don't live anywhere around here. They're just involved with one group, and uh, I, they're trying to tell you what to do with your bylaws, and I, I personally am offended by it. Thank you. Jackie Bloom. Hi there. I just want to counter that last caller. This isn't some like stop the steal, like, like ballots in a creek, like conspiracy. Like we live here, we care about our neighborhood and we expect our neighborhood council to be efficient. We also expect leadership. We expect whoever is in charge here to have a process, follow process and use their executive role to make sure it's guided correctly. It's that simple. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. I think I'm going to end public comment now. There are, no, there are no more hands up, so let's call the vote. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we're voting on creating a standing rule number 27. As of January 13, 2021, a board member who abstains cannot ask for a reconsideration. Karen, can you take the roll call? Hey, Boo Boo. He's talking to the cat, by the way. <laughs> Karen, are you here? Karen's muted. Unmute yourself, Karen. Okay, sorry. Uh, Karen DiBiase, Secretary. Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant, emphatic yes. Karen DiBiase, I'm voting no. Uh, Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler, yes. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy, yes. Ray Cole. Oh, votes no. Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes no. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes no. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes no. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes no. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes no. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes overdue yes. 
Lauren Kaufman? Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon would like to abstain, but he knows that that means yes, so he's going to vote no. <clears throat> August Steuer. August Steuer votes yes, but we should have been given the opportunity to decide between the opposite. There's no um, argument given as to uh, which we way is better. It's just a vote. Ginny Sand. Ginny Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, yes. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman, yes. Okay, this is Karen DiBiase, secretary. The vote is 12, yes, seven, no. For a total of 19, the motion passes. Thank you, Karen. Can we now move on to item number six? Seven. I'm sorry, seven. item number seven. Item number seven, President Joyce Fletcher, remedy two per grievance 267, 268, 269, 270, 271, 272. Relative to the Woodland Hills Wonder Center Neighborhood Council Board, responding to grievance relative, relative to agenda item number one on the Woodland Hills Wonder Center Neighborhood Council, November 10th, 2020. Special board meeting agenda to adopt a possible remedy related to Woodland Hills Wonder Center Neighborhood Council bylaws and Robert's Rules of Order. Motion for the board to approve a request from the Woodland Hills from Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council that the city attorney provide a one-hour teleconference training session at a board meeting for the full board of the council related to neighborhood council bylaws, review of Robert's rules of order and all other city and federal regulations and rules. Second. Do I have a second? Sean McCarthy seconds. Thank you, Sean. The item is now open for discussion. And we will, it, discussion will be one minute and we will go to the board members first. Uh, no board members have their hands up. We have two public comments. Zach Violet. Go ahead, Zach. Uh, yeah, I just want to say I am in support of this. Uh, I think actually beyond what happened, I think it's always good to get extra training on these rules. Um, for instance, to help out Chris Rowe, asking for any kind of information from stakeholders is a Brown Act violation. You cannot do that. So it's really good for everybody to know these rules, especially when they participate in the neighborhood council system. So I support this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zach. Steve R., you have one minute. Yeah, I support this. Um, I would like, you know, to amend it. I think you guys need a three hour uh, training from the city attorney if someone's willing to take that motion on. Um, I don't think you're gonna get it all in one hour and to address the things that Zach mentioned also. But I also wanna bring out that we're still not addressing uh, the revocation of that CIS. So I you're like dancing that. around all the other things. So this is really wonderful. You're still talking about the grievance, but you're still not talking about the core part of the grievance. So thank you. Please. I, I would like to address that topic because it's been brought up so many times. We cannot rescind motions once they've been vo voted on because it is the vote of the board. However, the governance, I mean, ap I apologize. The homelessness committee at any time 
can take uh, up uh, on their committee discussion about the council file. And they can write their own um, community impact statement. They can write their own motion. I put all motions uh, on the agenda. I never turn down a motion. So the homeless, Ray Cole, who's the chair of the homelessness committee at any time and any time prior to November is always welcome to put it on his homelessness committee agenda and write uh, a community impact statement and a motion and send it to me to be placed on the February uh, board meeting agenda. Jackie Blum. Thank you. Um, I just, I actually would prefer if Steve was able to finish his comment without being, or if their comment without being cut off for debate by a board member. <clears throat> Sim simply, you guys understand we're talking about rules and bylaws and standing laws. Um, we're talking about Robert's rules. We're talking about the Brown Act. Um, it's not your place, Joyce, to debate or to argue or to interrupt during public comment. So if you'd like to, I know Steve's still on the phone, to give them back their time so they can finish without interruption, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, Steve, Steve, you have uh, 30 seconds. I think Jackie did pretty darn good for me. So I appreciate Jackie uh, speaking uh, in support of me. And um, hopefully uh, Jackie will consider running for your neighborhood council because I think you need some good uh, members like that who are concerned about their stakeholders. And I am a stakeholder for whoever said I wasn't. Thank you. Nigel. Uh, yeah, I, I want to support this motion as well. Um, I think, you know, I think uh, just in the last minute or so, we kind of proved why this board needs to take a training session on um, <laughs> the rules and regulations and the Roberts Rules of Order. Uh, but yeah, I would support this. And, and I would also question whether withdrawing a CIS from the council, the city council record is is the same as nullifying a vote because I don't think it is and I think it is something that's fully within your power so I'd look into that thank you Brenda Smith so I would just like to say that I support this and also to the woman who was questioning stakeholdership I'm new to the community but I live near that darn little ace hardware on Ventura so I am part of this community and I resent the implication that just because someone is new to their community that that doesn't mean that they can't be an involved member. I was also wondering that if you did do this I would like for it to be open to the public because this is something that I would be very interested in attending. Uh, so if you do get it, I very much hope that it's open to the public because I would like to go because I would like a refresher because this is very much an area of interest of mine and I've always been civically minded and I'd like to be civically minded in my new community. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Well, we're asking for it to be at a board meeting, which would be publicly noticed and agendized. Mm -hmm. So you would have the ability mm -hmm. to participate. Pilar, Pilar Chavo. Hi. Um, so I support this as well. Uh, I think that the training will do a lot of good for everybody involved. Um, I do, you know, I think, um, Joyce, we keep bringing up the, you know, overturning of the CIS or, or um, revoking of that because that was part of the remedy requested and that was the impetus for the multiple grievances that you all received. Um, and so, you know, it should have been something that was put forward just as these other items are being put forward as resolutions to the grievances. It should have been put forward as a resolution to the grievance to overturn it since it was inappropriately passed. So, you know, I, I don't understand why that's not part of the resolutions tonight. And we'll, we'll just have to move forward in the process um, you know, if it's, if that's not resolved. Lee. Hi, Lee speaking on behalf of myself. Um, Go ahead, Lee. 
unmute yourself. Hi, Lee, speaking on behalf of myself, um, as the former sergeant at arms and parliamentarian of my neighborhood council, uh, I suggest the board significantly look on who's going to administer the training. Typically, it will fall under the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment, who by all accounts has no idea how bylaws or standing rules or Robert rules actually are implemented or what those rules are. And so I would seek to suggest to you to put in a qualified person to go ahead and administer said training. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Uh, Christine Rowe is the last hand up. Go ahead, Christine. No, I have one. Well, let, 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 let's let the public comment first. All right. Go ahead, Christine. Hi. Um, since I was called out during this discussion, I would like to state this. Yes, it is a true statement that you cannot require a person to sign in or to identify themselves. You can request and I never said that all of these people were not stakeholders. I said, I know specifically a couple people where they live, uh, general areas, uh, members of residents of Canoga Park, West Hills, and people that don't even live in the Valley that are on this call. And so that's why I was referencing it because I feel like it's one thing for your, your, your residents who have genuine concerns to express their concerns, but we have a problem with a certain group of people that are going around from one neighborhood council to another that are causing a lot of problems on the board. And I, I feel very badly for you that you're taking, that you've had these grievances filed against you. And um, I, I, I do also support the concept of it does say the city attorney. I agree. It needs to be the city attorney that does a training. And I've taken the training with the city attorney twice as a former board member of West Hills Neighborhood Council and afterward. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie Bloom. Um, this meeting is running pretty over time, really late, it'd be great if you can have callers like Christine be forced to stay on topic and also make sure you're timing them for one minute exactly. Thank she you. Had a minute. Okay, so yeah, thank you all very much. We're, yeah. We have three we'll, board, we have three board members, Marty Lipkin. Um, can everyone, um, if you're repeating um, what someone else has said, I, I'm kindly requesting that um, we move on soon. Um, we have a long agenda. We just um, have three hands up, four, okay. okay. Okay, so we have three hands up and I believe Marty um, was next. Um, Go, ahead. Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Thank you. Uh, this is Marty Lipkin. I, am, uh, uh, I will echo one of the callers in, which is to say that to have empower or anybody other than a high ranking member of the uh, city attorney's office conduct any kind of a class is just a waste of time and it's a lot of hot air. Most people don't know. Look, we're asking the people who actually created this problem to, to, to come in and start training us, which seems really ludicrous, really ludicrous. And I'd like to make one other point. The other quick point is folks that have called in, yeah, you've been there, but you know what? There's a lot of people in this section of town that don't agree with you. Thank you. Do you know uh, Ray Cole? Go ahead, Ray. Peter, uh, so I have a question, partially and then a comment. So this, will this be just a one-time thing or will we do this every uh, time we get a new board voted in, because I think this needs to be ongoing. Normally, whenever there is a new board, Empower LA will come out and give a board training class. For the city attorney to come out, that has to be a request to the city attorney's office. Normally, they will send one out if you request uh, 
uh, to have someone attend a board meeting. And yes, I do think that the city attorney will come. I think it is important because the city attorney, after all, will is a, is the decision maker for the neighborhood council. So whatever is told to us has to be what is approved by Empower LA in the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Do you okay. Know, do you know well, what? I was wondering if it was, a, if it was a one-time thing or ongoing. Are we just gonna do this one time or? Do That'll be up, is, to the, be up to the new board. That would be up to the new board who will get seated probably in June or July. Ina Weiss. Thank you. I'm all for continuing education. I mean, I have my Robert's rules of order and review it. But uh, what about if we, and I think it's a great idea, but I'm just worried because our board meetings go on real late. So if this is going to take place in a board meeting, it may be another 1 a.m. So maybe this should be at a board retreat where the focus is on things like Robert's Rules of Order, bylaws, that we all review it ahead of time and everybody gets up to speed and make sure they know all our foundational rules. So I think a retreat uh, should be uh, scheduled soon. Thank you, Gina. August Doyer. Yes, this is August Doyer. Um, given the impending board change, this should be requested for the new board. It should be a special meeting, not a regular board meeting. And yes, it should be done on a regular basis, at least at the beginning of every new term. And uh, yes, it does take time. I'm not sure that one hour will be enough. Maybe it needs three one hour trainings. Um, but yeah, to do it, try and ask for it quickly. We won't get a quality training and you should also recommend that this be uh, incorporated into regular training for corners, Cornerstone. Thank you. Aaron Kwan. Oh uh, yeah, Aaron Kwan. Uh, this is uh, would be this is a remedy per grievance. Uh, I see no reason why we should move it uh, to an incoming board when it was a, a grievance from something our board, our currently seated board, did. So I think it is important that we all take advantage of this and read up on our Roberts rules and you know do everything we can because. Uh, you know, it, we need to not look like, um, we, we need to look better than we have been. Um, and I know, and I know we can be. Thank you. Let's call the vote. Um, Karen, can you take the roll call vote, please? All right, this is, this is Karen DiBiazzi, uh, Aaron Quant. Aaron Kwan votes yes. Karen DiBiazzi. Karen DiBiazzi votes yes. Uh, Paul Aller. Paul Aller votes yes. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole. Rick Hobos, yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes yes. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipkin votes no until the city attorney fixes what they messed up. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes. <clears throat> Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. 
Gilbert Il Blanc. Gilbert Il Blanc boots, yes. August Steuer. August Steuer votes yes. Jeannie <clears throat> Sand. Jeannie Sand votes yes. Joyce Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Hutan Hermosian. Hutan Hermosian, no. No? Correct, no. And Shepard, thank you. And Shepard uh, Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman votes yes. Okay, so this is Karen DiBiase, secretary. Uh, the vote is 17 yes, two no for a total of 19. The motion passes. We will now move on to item number eight. <clears throat> Remedy number three, per grievance 267, 268, 269, 270, 271, 272. Relative to the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council responding to grievances related to agenda item number one on the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council, November 10th, 2020, special board meeting agenda. Motion for the board to approve a request from the Woodland Hills Warner from Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council that the city attorney provide a one hour teleconference training session at a board meeting for the full board of the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council related to board member compliance with the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council Code of Civility and the Empower LA Code of Conduct. Do I have a second? Second. Sean McCarthy seconds. Thank you, Sean. This motion is now open for discussion. <clears throat> One minute, please, and we will take comments from the board members first. Thank Gina you. Weiss. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Again, I'm all for this. Uh, all education is good. All reminders are fantastic to keep us on our toes and the best we can possibly be as elected officials. However, my concern again is if we do this during a regular meeting, when on earth will we get the board actual meeting business achieved? And again, I think we should probably devote separate sessions to these trainings. Hey, Cole. Hey, Cole. I think I agree with Dana. I think that we need to have maybe a special meeting for just trainings, have this <laughs> recorded, and then have this available for the next board that comes on because this issue isn't like something that just popped up. This is going to keep continuing. It's going to keep going on. And I guess our uh, law ethics and uh, code of conduct training that we take is not enough. So to have this so people can revisit it or be redirected to it will be a lot better. <laughs> Uh, Aaron Kwan. Uh, yeah, Aaron Kwan. Um, I, I read uh, all of these grievances as they uh, were first sent to us uh, a month and a half, two months ago, uh, and I only see one potential remedy uh, that has been presented itself. Um, I know there were a few others. Is there a reason why we are we have only chosen that we're going to uh, enforce this remedy upon ourselves. So I know there were a few others involved. And uh, uh, yeah, could I get some, uh, any answers on that, please? Yes. Um, actually, uh, there is a system within the Neighborhood Council. It's called uh, a Neighborhood Council Grievance pa Panel. The Neighborhood Council Grievance Pan, or actually it's called the Empower LA Grievance Panel, they certify grievances. 
The only grievance that they certified was a question related to the bylaws. Uh, they do not certify grievances related to a code of conduct or any grievance filed against an individual board member. So whenever you see the certification of uh, the grievance panel, they only certify certain things as being within their purview. We have added um, the training um, ourselves because we feel that as a neighborhood council, um, so far we have felt that, uh, tr that training is important and we would like to get more of it. So um, if you will look at the um, certified grievances that are on the website, you will see what the grievance panel actually certified. And what they certified was that they would review the bylaw, our bylaws, as it relates to reconsideration. Okay, August Stoyer. Um, as someone who's taken training recently, I don't know what this is intended to do beyond what the required training is already. I see the potential for this to devolve into grievances against the actions of individual individuals and their behavior during past meetings and I go for a free for all ra rather than a training session. I don't want this to devolve into a court of inquiry. Thank you. Karen DiBiase. Uh, this is Karen DiBiase. I'm agreeing with uh, uh, what Gina had said. Uh, this, uh, the code of civility and the code of conduct, I believe this is something important that we should uh, study and have training on every year. This is typically also been a part of our um, uh, annual retreat, and it should be in place every time we get new board members. So if we're doing this now, we should also do it again when all new board members are seated later this year. All, um, all board members are required to sign the Empower LA Code of Conduct. And cool. when new board members come on, uh, in June, they will be required to sign the Empower LA Code of Conduct. <laughs> okay, Jenny Sand, and then we're going to go on to the members of the public. Okay, uh, I guess maybe I'm in a minority here, but I think we voted for an hour to talk about this whenever it is, whether it's a special thing or added to it or our interminable meetings. But I also think this, this uh, kind of respect um, and, and code of conduct should be a two-way street. I think we should, I think what went on that night in that seven hour free-for-all was insanity. And I don't think we need, since we've all been through this training and it's been very narrow uh, retraining, I guess that we need, it's gonna be a good thing. We've already voted for an hour, but I think more than an hour is, is and especially since we're gonna have it again uh, when we have a new board seated, I think is is way, way more than we, we need. And um, I, I think, frankly, uh, Joyce was treated abominably. And um, I, I think an hour is going to be plenty for us to sort of get a refresher in um, our side of the code of civility. Thank you, Jenny. I'm going to go on to the public now. Zach Violet. Uh, yeah, hello. Um, I support this. Um, I've rewatched the video of that November meeting. And um, I mean, Joyce was consistently cutting off members of the board, members of the public, um, anybody who sort of challenged her on that, she would just scream at them, file a complaint. Um, and, you know, tonight, we've had Marty, like sort of yelling at stakeholders who are, have called in so like um you know when people have when they come to these meetings and they have legitimate grievances and they're being yelled at by the board members 
um, you know, it doesn't seem like their input is being uh, taken seriously. And in fact, it seems like it's being uh, taken with disdain. But I wanna stress again, the real issue here, you guys could pull the CIS from the city clerk site. You can talk to the city clerk and say, there was a mistake, there was an illegal reconsideration vote, and then the vote that passed the CIS happened after that, you know, fruit of the poisonous tree, you can get the city clerk to remove it. That's the, that is the redress for this whole grievance that everyone here really wants. So that's one minute. Address that. Jackie Bloom. I would like to reiterate what uh, Zach had stated. I, I think this, um, I'm in support of you guys having another hour teleconference session. However, um, the code of conduct is on Empower site. It's there, it's listed there. There are, I'm looking at it, there are simply, you know, six points and some bullet points. Read it, refresh it, learn it, use it. That's it, it's not that difficult. Um, you know, this this board is lazy. These, these uh, motions are performative. Um, you can, uh, do better. You can simply follow the code of conduct. You can not yell at stakeholders, but coming back in 2021, um, trying to pretend that you need more exercises or more training. No, you just need to go back and look at the rules and just follow them. Um, I yield my time. Thank you. Pilar Shabo. You have to unmute Pilar. Yeah, um, I support this, you know, additional training. I, I want to just um, reemphasize what Zach mentioned in terms of revoking the CIS that was inappropriately passed. That's the, at the core of the issue. None of these resolutions really get to correcting um, that inappropriately passed mo motion. And so it's not, ultimately the remedy is not um, obtained, you know, through these, through these different motions. So I appreciate that there are steps being taken here to remedy some of the issues that came up, but that really was the core issue on why I, and I think a number of other people filed grievances. Thank you. Thank you. Brenda Smith. Hi, all again. Um, so first off, I think this, this is a good motion. I support it. I think in general, we can also afford to have a little more sugar in our tea when it comes to how we treat each other in the public and everything else like that. I think that in general, it's a good reason to be reminded to have kindness going forward. And it doesn't hurt anybody to take an hour out of their life to be reminded of what they need to do and their responsibilities. I did have a question though, because Christine was talking about people not living here, not being stakeholders, but I was reading over all your bylaws and whatnot, because I'm thinking about maybe running, I don't know, we'll see. But you don't have to live here to be a stakeholder. You could worship here, like at the Woodland Hills Community Church, or you could volunteer here at like the West Valley Food Pantry, and you'd still be a stakeholder. So somebody doesn't have to live here just to be a stakeholder. Am I incorrect in my understanding of that? That's all, thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. Lee? I can answer the question. Um, our bylaws, um, Peter, are our bylaws on the website? Yes. If you go to our website at www.whcouncil.org, you will see our bylaws. And as, if you read through the bylaws, it specifically says what a stakeholder is in, in our area, in Woodland Hills. It very clearly defines it. And in fact, uh, Empower LA has added some new language and uh, all the board members should read that new language and also all the members of the public. But our bylaws are on our website, www.whcouncil.org. Lee? Go ahead, you have one minute. Hi, Lee, speaking on behalf of myself, um, I would caution the board inviting the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment into regulating and, and changing and rendering opinions for 
uh, your board on how you guys deem to run ad- items. It is the equivalent of inviting a wolf into the hen house. Specifically, when you ask them for case citations and points, Dunn consistently cannot find and cannot cite their quote unquote determinations. I would suggest that you'd follow Robert's rules and have the parliamentarian render judgments on in, in clear uh, rules. And that can always be challenged and uh, by a first and second and then a 50% vote of the standing board. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate that. Um, Nigel. Uh, hi, yeah, uh, I think I, um, I agree with this, uh, this motion. I think, you know, any, any sort of new training is, is good. It's a good uh, excuse to refresh on that stuff. Um, I think Dina had a good point about maybe not uh, doing it, you know, that interferes with your other board stuff. But I would mention, as, as Brenda said, it should definitely be in a public forum. Um, and yeah, I just think that it, this is an opportunity for you guys to, uh, get better. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no shame in getting better at what you do. I mean, clearly there was part of some of the rules you guys didn't understand or were blatantly breaking and that's fine. You admit it and you move on and you get better at your jobs. I mean, that's, that's part of life. So I would say don't fight it and use this as an opportunity to grow. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, Christine Rowe. I believe Christine has already spoken. Okay. Um, so not, on this, not on this one. I, I don't think on this one. Not on this one, no. Okay, excuse me, Chris. Um, so I would like to um, support what um, Lee just said, the budget advocate, uh, about Empower LA because number one, they caused one of the problems for you in the beginning. And number two, um, I've been involved with this issue with another neighborhood council right now with uh, errors of uh, regarding the Brown Act, for example, with another neighborhood council. So um, I would, I, I support what Dina says that this be a retreat. It's gonna take a couple of hours, but I wanna point out that as a former board member of West Hills, the code of civility, we were told in my training to always keep it on our side. And actually, since you probably have a copy of it, you could literally, as we're speaking right now, you could be flashing it up there. So when people challenge you uh, as board members about, I'm talking about the aggressive nature of some of the stakeholders that speak, the code of civility applies to the stakeholders as well as to the board members. And therefore, the, the chair should be saying, okay, we're gonna stop discussion and look at code of civility. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Caleb. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm following Christine actually because just to circle back here, the reason that it seems like this is very important and maybe it's great that it is public, maybe Christine can, can attend because she is knowingly, I mean, she says she has this thing right on her hip side. She's got it a little uh, right in her pocket while well, she's violated number six on the code of civility multiple times in multiple meetings that I have been president where there is willfully misinformation because apparently you know all the rules, but you're violating them anyway and you're misquoting things or misrepresenting things that is a violation. So it would appear that this body and also maybe Christine who's no longer a member would really, really benefit from this, myself included. I would love it. I mean, Brenda made a great point. Like, I think it'd just be great. Let's make it a good community event. We all can come, like we can never learn too much, right? We're students for life. So I think this is a really great motion. Thanks for uh, bringing this forward. Let's get it done. Thank you for your comment. I think we will close. Uh, okay. we, have two, we have two more, just two. Okay. Okay. Today, Kennedy. Hi. Uh, yeah, I'll try to keep it um, brief. Um, I was, um, you know, uh, happy with these uh, remedies that were brought forward. Um, however, a little question came into my mind when um, Miss, I think Jenny Sand brought up that these are um, already kind of protocol, and these would just be refreshers, and that kind of just raised a question in my head of whether these remedies 
do go far enough. Um, and I want to kind of echo that um, voice of uh, uh, withdrawing that uh, motion that was brought forward in November, um, uh, since that these just kind of seem like they're repetitions of what is already there. Um, and I guess that's it. Um, so thank you. Have a good night. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> Last comment, <laughs> Steve R. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm going to be very civil because Christine Rowe doesn't think I have been, and I am trying to display a civil code of conduct, um, not calling anybody names um, other than I called her out and said I'm really a stakeholder. Uh, I do uh, support this. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to have a refresher course, but um, you know, as Caleb said, we're all students for life. We can all benefit. Um, we can all learn from this. Um, but what I hope we can learn from is still going back and addressing the original grievance of revoking that CIS. And I know you can do it. I know there's ways and I would encourage you all to figure it out. Thank you. Okay, that ends public comment. Okay, we will now take a roll call vote. Wait, Kimber, I had my hand raised. You've already spoken. I did not on this. Okay, go ahead, Marty. You got one minute. All right. Um, number one, I think that uh, uh, Caleb was right. That uh, I think that, or whoever it was, I think it was Caleb said it, that I think everybody should be part of it. And I think the folks that are on the, uh, the attendee side should be uh, uh, made to attend the thing as, just as much as we are, because I think they were as out of line as, as some of the neighborhood council people were. And uh, uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Number two, and I don't even remember who said it, it was the second guy, um, he didn't like how I yelled at him. I didn't yell at you, you, have, you don't know me. Marty. If you, want to, if you want me to yell, I'll be happy to. <coughs> Party. Yes. Okay, okay. Let's take a vote. Um, let's um, the. <clears throat> I would considering that we're discussing the code of conduct. Excuse me, I have really bad allergies. <clears throat> yes, the code of conduct, the code of civility, does apply to both the public and to board members, and we're discussing it now. And so let's everyone be in compliance with the code of conduct. And now we're going to take a roll call vote. Karen, please. Hey, this is Karen DiBiazzi, secretary. Uh, we're voting on item number eight. Aaron Quantz. Aaron Quantz, maybe Robert's rules two votes yes. Karen DiBiazzi. Karen DiBiazzi votes yes. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes yes. Sean McCarthy. This is Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole. This is Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes. Are they going to pay us for all of this extra time? They're going to pay us what they always pay us. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, yeah. Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Alex Ferrosati. Alex Farasetti votes yes. Uh, Marty Lipkin. I will vote yes only if the public is mandated to come. We can't do that, Marty. Let's move on with the roll call vote, please. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss votes yes, and I'm sure we will be paid with all the goodwill generated. <laughs> Austin Roker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Peter Fletcher. Peter Fletcher votes yes. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Yablon. Gilbert Yablon votes yes. August Doyle. August Doyle votes no because I believe it will become divisive and disruptive. <laughs> Jenny Sand. Jenny Sand votes no because I think an hour will be enough to discuss civility and, and, and the rules that we need to discuss. We've already voted for that. 
George Fletcher. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Bhutan Hermosian. Bhutan Hermosian, no. Shepard Kaufman. Shepard Kaufman, yes. Okay, so this is Karen Gibiazzi, secretary. This is the vote. 16, yes, three, no, for a total of 19, the motion passes. We will now, we will now move to item number nine. Executive Committee, President Joyce Fletcher. Relative to Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council responding to grievances 267, 268, 269, 270, 271, and 272 relative to agenda item number one on the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council November 10th, 2020 special board meeting per bylaws, Article 7, committees and their duties. Section 4A, Chairperson. With the concurrence of the other officers of the Neighborhood Council, the President shall designate a person to serve as a chairperson for each Neighborhood Council committee, subcommittee, or ad hoc committee. Motion. In concurrence, the officers of the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council authorize Shepard Kaufman to be the designated representative to speak on behalf of the board should the grievances be, remit, be reviewed by an Empower LA regional grievance panel and to chair a Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council grievance review ad hoc committee if requested by Empower LA. Per bylaws, ad hoc committees are established for a specific purpose and are not required to hold public meetings if no stakeholders are on the committee. Do I have a second? Paul Lawler here, I'll second. Thank you, Paul. The item is now open for discussion. One minute, please. We have no analysts or public comment from Nigel. Go ahead, Nigel, you have one minute. I, yeah, uh, I, I support this. I think this is a, a good step. Um, just like all the last things, I'm glad that you guys are voting yes on these and taking this action. Um, you know, I think it's kind of ironic that while we're, you know, while you're addressing these grievances for fixing your conduct and, and, you know, relearning the rules, the Roberts rules of orders, we have Marty <laughs> getting mad and yelling at stakeholders once again. Um, so I just, I really think you guys need to reassess and, and really, you know, take a look in the mirror and, and think about if this is going to be a new chapter or, or just more of the same uh, nonsense. Thanks. Thank you for your comment. Jackie Bloom. I want to second what, um, I don't know what his name was, uh, Nick or Nigel. We are here with grievances about procedural fails. You know, you did your board comment, went to public comment and allowed an unhinged board member to come back after public comment to terrorize and um, and sort of debate with, with public commenters. The cycle that we're trying to break with these grievances and thanks to whoever spent the time bravely filing them is the habits you guys have. And even in the exercise of having this conversation, you don't break them. You know, you're not, you're not breaking habits. I, I think Chep is a cool guy. I think it's great to have someone who is going to be a singular voice because your collective voices are a mess right now. Um, Marty's unhinged, but you open the door to allow him to come and rebut against public comment. So at this point, yeah, Shep is the probably most qualified person to be able to lead this into a space where it's not um, people who keep pushing this board back to a cycle of repeated behavior. You know, we're talking about grievances that are now four months old. Um, and okay. I don't see That's this one minute. graduating from it. Thank you for your comment. Steve R. 
Yeah, I uh, support this um, as another uh, attempt to um, work out the grievances that you were called on. Uh, I just still am concerned that we're not affecting the original grievance. And I am calling on somebody, please, to amend this motion, to make an amendment to this motion tonight, because you can do that to try and revoke that CIS, not try to revoke that CIS. That is addressing the grievance. That is something that you can do tonight. Uh, and then I also wonder about this silly little bylaw in there. I know you can't do anything about it now. I can't believe it got past the city attorney about that you don't have to hold public meetings if no stakeholders are on the committee. It's still an ad hoc committee of the neighborhood council. So it should still be public, whether a non-elected person is on the committee or not. Um, That's one minute. Thank you for your comment. Brenda Smith. Hi, all. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Um, so first of all, I just say I'd like to support this. I think it's a good thing. I would like it to be open to the public um, because that's something I'd be interested in attending and seeing and just, you know, learning more about the process. And Joyce, thank you so much. I did look it up. It is open to all stakeholders. So whether it's, you know, living here like I do, or whether it's that you work here or that you worship here, those are all the people that are the stakeholders. So I really just am still baffled by that comment of, oh, people don't live here because people worship here. People work here. There's more than one way to be a stakeholder was my understanding of it. But Joyce, thank you so much. I did go check and I appreciate it. So that's really all. But I would like it to be public because I would be interested in learning and expanding and whatnot. So thanks, y'all. Thanks, Brenda. Uh, Lee, go ahead. You have one minute. We're not hearing you, Lee. You're unmuted. I apologize. Um, Lee, speaking on behalf of myself, uh, I would suggest that the chair check with, uh, I believe it's the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners policy on the semblance of a grievance panel. I believe they have a procedure. And if I remember it correctly, certain members from outside the neighborhood council get selected to sit on it when a certified grievance by Empower LA uh, is cited. Um, if there is a version of it that you guys are going to be doing on your own, uh, I would also suggest that you probably have someone outside of the neighborhood council uh, to sort of provide a neutral and uh, unbiased of, of judgment on whatever the issue is. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lee. You, Lee. Um, the region, the Empower LA region, regional grievance panel is what Shepard uh, would who they who he would be speaking with uh, should uh, the grievers uh, appeal uh, any sort uh, these uh, remedies then it will go to the Empower LA regional grievance panel and how uh, Empower LA forms that panel uh, they do that by uh, individuals whom they have on a list that they will pick to review the grievances. Uh, as um, that are within the grievance panels, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting old and my, uh, my mind's going blank. But yes, it will go before the, the Empower LA Regional Grievance Panel. And at that time, the grievers, I believe, have X amount of minutes to speak, just like at this meeting. And then Shep would have X amount of minutes to speak. So we're authorizing Shep to speak at the regional grievance panel. Lars Shavo. Hi, I support this. I also uh, want to make sure that there that stakeholders are allowed to be a part of this process and um, again you know echo the speaker earlier who said that there needs to be you know redress around the original motion and hopefully there's still time to include that in the resolutions tonight if, if you want to do that that'd be great thanks Okay, I'm going to two end more, public comment more. now. There's only two more. Caleb? Uh, okay. 
Yeah, I was just going to offer, I mean, it seems like a lot of folks, um, I think this is great, by the way, it sounds like Shep is a good person. I have no idea who that person is, but yay, go Shep. Um, but I was just going to say, it seems like, because I was also just, I'm learning so much tonight. I was reading through your bylaws and it looks like amendments, changes, additions to bylaws or standing rules may be proposed by the board, by stakeholders or a neighborhood council committee. So what if I just offer an amendment right now to say that when Shep meet with this board that we can actually go ahead and uh, demand that the CIS be revoked when they have that conversation. I think that would be, that'd be really great, right? Especially if we're having to meet with a grievance panel, let's go ahead and just remove that since this was improperly done. What do we think about that? We can't do that because we can only offer up remedies. The grievance, the regional grievance panel will send our rem remedies to the grievers, then the specific grievers will respond to the regional grievance panel. Then the grievance panel will conduct a meeting between the grievers and Shep will represent the board. That will be done at the grievance panel. Okay, two more public comments and that'll be it, Jackie Bloom. Go ahead, you have one minute. I just, I just want to ask Joyce again to not um, rebut or respond to people in public comment. It's your space to voice their concerns without you layering on an opinion or fact to it. Um, that's just how public comment works. Thank you. Christine Rowe. I have to say that uh, I, I support this, uh, but it's very clear to me that some of these people are not familiar with neighborhood council procedures, that you cannot redress the CIS. Anything that is not on the agenda, you cannot take action on uh, at this meeting. And, and Joyce did state earlier tonight that the homelessness committee could take that issue back to them and offer their own alternative CIS for later. And so I believe that Joyce has been weighing in when appropriate for point of clarification. And I, I just, I thank you for your time. Okay, that, that's the end. Let's vote. Okay. We have now ended public comment Did and we will now take, or? we will now take a roll call vote. Hey, this is Karen DiBiase, separate Se secretary, voting on item number nine. Aaron Quant. Aaron Quant, get it. get him, Shep. Yes. Karen DiBiase. Karen DiBiase votes yes. Paul Lawler. Paul Lawler votes yes. Sean McCarthy. Sean McCarthy votes yes. Ray Cole. Ray Cole votes yes. Nancy McLean. Nancy McLean votes yes, and I'm going to have to leave the meeting now. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, Angela Dawson. Angela Dawson votes yes. Alex Farasati. Alex Farasati votes yes. Marty Lipkin. Marty Lipton. Come on, Marty, hurry up. It's your one job. <laughs> and we put the microphones being muted. Can everyone please mute their microphones? We're doing roll call vote, and there should not be anyone speaking during roll call vote other than giving Mom, your Marty. Why don't you move Marty. on and come back to him? I'm going to come back to him. Dina Weiss. Dina Weiss, <laughs> yes. Austin Rocker. Austin Rocker votes yes. Peter Fletcher. Austin, Peter Fletcher votes yes. Go for it, Chef. Lauren Kaufman. Lauren Kaufman votes yes. Gilbert Yelblan. My apologies to Chef. 
but I vote yes. <laughs> August Storer. August Storer votes yes. Jenny San. Jenny San votes yes. Go get him, Shep. Joyce Shepard. Joyce Fletcher, sorry. Joyce Fletcher, yes. Ken Hermosian. Bhutan. Shep, we owe you one. <laughs> <laughs> Bhutan, yes. how are you voting? Yes. Bhutan Hermosian. Shepard Kaufman. <laughs> uh, Shepard Kaufman would love to have lost this one, but uh, I'll abstain <laughs> given that it's about me. So uh, I guess that still counts as a, oh, it doesn't, it counts as a yes. It's, it's an appropriate uh, answer. All right, going back to Marty Lipkin. Uh, yeah. You are. You are what? I took, a per I took a personal break. Um, you need to report to the. Uh, well, <laughs> Does your tummy hurt, you're Marty? Back now. Yes or no? I'm sorry. What? Yes, no, or abstain. Can I have your vote, please? Um, is on, uh, to the point, Shep is the. Yeah, first fine, one. fine, fine. Fine is not an answer. I need a yes, no, or abstain. Yeah, please. yes, 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 yes. Thank you. All right, so the end, so the vote is 18 yes, zero no, one abstain for a total of 19. The motion passes. Thank you, Shepard, for doing this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number 10, Outreach okay. Committee, Peter Fletcher. We have six items to go. Let's try and knock this out by 1130. This is all we related. The next four are related to election funding. So <clears throat> item number 10, discussion and possible action. Motion for the board to approve an expenditure of up to $50 per month in the general outreach funds the social media calendar posting service, Hey Orca, for the Woodland Hills Warner Center Neighborhood Council Outreach Committee. And I'll just tell you that Hey Orca is a tool that Bobby and I, will, Bobby Wasserman and I will use to schedule all our posts to promote the um, election. You set up a whole calendar. We write Very the post. seconds before you continue. Okay. We write the post and then Bobby just plugs them in the calendar and they all get posted on every social media service. So can I get a second? Is that you, Ray? That is correct, yes. Okay. Uh, public, do we have any uh, comment from the board? No. I see two members of the public if it pertains to this item, Pat. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I just uh, I had a suggestion that like when you make like social media posts, um, especially specifically pertaining to like community impact statements, to have like a little icon, um, like if they originate in like a city council office, um, specifically for like if if it's not something that that the neighborhood council wrote itself. Uh, this is related to the election. We'll write all the posts. Oh, okay. Thank you. This has nothing to do with anything outside of the neighborhood council is to promote our election to the stakeholders. Zach? Yeah, uh, I had my hand raised the entire time for that last agenda item and I was skipped. So I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna call the city clerk tomorrow and see if you can actually just have the CIS that was illegally- I, I'm very, I'm very, I, I know I'm, I'm interrupting you, but Neither the public nor the board members can discuss I, an item once um, it's it's been voted on. It's We're now on item number ten. Joyce. We're I'll, now on. I'll just, I'll, okay, okay, cool, Joyce. I will just email you with the city clerk's answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jackie Bloom, if your comment is about this item, go ahead. 
Um, you don't have the privilege of screening my comments, Peter, but my comment is about this item. There are free tools. How many posts per month do you guys use where you need to have a personal publisher? What is the volume that you're going to post per month on social media? Um, I have looked at your feeds. What you post is nominal. It is manageable. It is even easily done manually. So this seems like a uh, useless expenditure um, and it just sort of trends against the lazy habits of this board to automate things. Thank you, okay. bye. Uh, because we want to increase our posting. You don't have to comment back to me. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for your comment. Brenda Smith. Hi, y'all. I just want to say, um, I have a friend that used this company for her business, and she ended up not continuing on with it because she didn't really find it all that useful. She ended up just, I don't know, thinking that she could handle it more herself. So depending on your volume of postings, unless you're like a super high volume business, I just don't know if it's something y'all need. But, you know, figure it, figure it out. Just wanted to give my feedback based on her experience. Thanks so much. Bye. Okay. August Stoyer. Yes. Um, are you getting special pricing for this? Because the website yes. says $50 per month per calendar when you sign up for five or more. Yeah, this we're getting uh, a 50% discount. So it's $50, $50 a month versus the regular $100 per month. Thank you, August. And um, did you evaluate other similar services? like? Yes, yes, we did. This came from Bobby Wasserman, who was on the outreach committee. Okay. Lauren Kaufman. So this is only for the duration up till the, ele the election or are you well, going to continue? Up, no, this is just up till May 4th. Okay. And then it'll be a new board. Okay. Steve R. 